College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah on Fox Sports Net brings you to Lawrence, Kansas. It's the Big 12 Conference, the number two team in the nation, the 9-0 Nebraska Cornhuskers taking on the upset-minded Kansas Jayhawks. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers along with James Lofton, and welcome to Lawrence. Extremes at the quarterback position tonight, <laughs> to say the yeah. least. Inexperienced for Kansas, Mario Kinsey is the only freshman to start at quarterback in the Big 12. Other side, a wealth of experience, Eric Crouch. We could be watching the Heisman Award winner. And one guy who has total control of his offense, and Mario Kinsey's a guy who may be as inconsistent as exciting, but he can produce big plays. When you talk about big plays, you have to think of Eric Crouch and all the heroics that he's performed just this season and when you do mention Heisman Trophy I really believe this guy is the front runner we're going to see some fireworks from him tonight let's join the third member of our team now Eric Clemens Eric all right Joel thank you very much you know for Kansas to have a real shot at an upset tonight over number two Nebraska they'll need to control the clock with some big plays in the running game that includes from the quarterback and running back positions and Reggie Duncan is a guy in the backfield who can do the job he had a career game 227 yards against Texas Tech a few weeks back he hasn't had that many yards in all his other games combined and he'll have to get through a tough black shirt defense in Nebraska that ranks amongst the top six in four different defensive categories. Hey the players coaches and fans here at Memorial Stadium are ready for football. We'll be ready for the opening kickoff from Lawrence Kansas Kansas hosting Nebraska after a short timeout. Hey, it's going to be a good game. I don't think the Jayhawks are ready for us though. A safe landing for Challenger. What an entry. Welcome back as we continue with College Football Saturday presented by Kia Zera. Big 12 Conference, Frank Solich. First time he has started out in his fourth year at 9-0 as the Cornhuskers head coach. Terry Allen in his fifth year at Kansas. It has been a tough year, to say the least, and because of the inexperience we were just talking about for Terry Allen at the quarterback position, without a doubt. Josh Brown will kick it away. Byron Gassaway is going to be back deep, along with Termaine Fulton, Fulton, the deep man, and we are ready. Here we go. Brown into it. It is going to be Fulton from the five. Good coverage by Nebraska. He's barely across the 20. Out to the 21-yard line. Sarah starting 12 offensively. Now, they did not win the toss, but Nebraska won to their defense on the fields of Mario Kinsey, the redshirt freshman, Otto Blaco. Behind the line of Sam, Smith, Smith, Grady, and Hartwig. Hartwig's done an outstanding job on the right side. Reggie Duncan, as Eric Clement said, can he get it going? Flankers, Ross Fulton, as well as Goodrich. And the tight end, David Hurst. Mario Kinsey, 6'1", 190 pounder. Two sport athlete last year, but he has given up basketball since. Throwing on first down and the deflection, jumping out on a Mark Bedrill, the weak side linebacker, the senior, Gregory South Dakota. Defensively, one of the best defensive units in all of college football. Kelsey, boy, has he come on. Clanton, Selecta, and Adams. In the 4 3, it's Shanley, Burrow, and Bedrill. Burrow, the Big 12's defensive player of the year. Craver and Gross, sensational cornerbacks, Booker and Bland with Booker, all that experience in the defensive backfield. Wabuzi split with Duncan on second down. Duncan, maybe a yard, two at the most, Slecta plugging that gap. You know, I'm talking to coaches around the league and, and even the Kansas coaches this week, the one thing that kept jumping out at us said this is the best Nebraska defense that they've seen in the last five or six seasons. Good against the pass with the defensive backs, Gross and Craver. Then you had Aaron Sweeney as the third cornerback, but really dominant against the run this year, only giving up 73 yards a game on the ground. Six best in the nation. They're fifth in total defense. Now, the last thing, Kansas can afford three and out. And only 60 and 90 second drives as Kinsey and the offense, it looks like, pick up a dead ball foul. Will it be delay of game? Took a long time to get everything orchestrated. Ball, delay a game on the offense. 
five yards, still third down. James, they need a mistake-free game, and they don't need this early. And the tough thing about that is you have scripted your plays. You have a first 12 plays that you'd like to run on first and second downs. But then on third downs, you also have four or five plays that you know you want to run, and third and 13 is not a good situation. They don't want to find themselves in. Dead last of the Big 12 in third down conversions. And a diving grab underneath for almost no yardage as it's taken in by Roger Ross. But a punting situation. So one of the great defensive units in the country and only getting better. The Nebraska Cornhuskers hold is Chris Terrell. Who will punt the ball away, the redshirt freshman from Liberty, Missouri. Dewan Gross, he has had hamstring problems this year. But is going to be available for return duties. His primary responsibility, let's face it, he's a sensational cover corner. Pressure, and Terrell takes a shot. It's going to be a flag. It's out of bounds across the midfield stripe. Now, is it five or a personal foul of 15? Hasselbrook got in there. Also, got Terrell. Tom Ehlers will let us know. Terrell needs to be a little better actor. Stay down, roll on the ground. He gets that 15. He got the 15 yards. Yes. You know, they thought they could get one. They'd get right up the middle, and you have a block point. And the minute that you go at the kicker, you're going to end up running into him. You have to curve your body and go across his foot where he's trying to kick the ball. So a 15-yard mark off. Terry Allen will take it. They will take any kind of break they can get. This is, and Kevin Frazier was just talking about it, the longest continuous series in all of college football. The sixth consecutive meeting between Nebraska and Kansas. James, is this a classic setting, though? It's almost like we're at a county fair. It is so nice. It really is. And the, the location of the campus sitting on this hill, it doesn't get much prettier than this in the conference. From the 34, they hand it off to Mills. Can't get away. What a play by Kelsey. Kelsey took it away. Clanton picks it up. There's no whistle. No, they're, they're signaling They are finally down. going to say he's down. When you get drugged down like that from behind, your leg is planted. I'm, I'm just hoping that Mills isn't hurt. He's limping off the field a little bit right now. What about the play of the defensive end and the speed of Kelsey? And, and, and that's what I talked about. Good against the run. You can't run straight at him. Very rarely do you have the speed to run around him. I mean, that's a 6'5", 270-pound guy running down a 5'9", 170-pound guy. So he gave away 100 pounds and still ran him down. So a loss of about three, make it four. Kinsey flares it out to Duncan. Great pursuit. Nebraska again gets the job done. This time it's Slechta. Well, we were talking about the experience of Deion Booker, the roverback. Yeah, I like Deion Booker. And when I did my scouting report, I'm, I put power puncher because he really is a big hitter. And he's a ball hawk. When you look at his statistics for interceptions and pass breakups, he's always around the ball. And relay team, George Darlington told me before the game, he said, back 10 years ago, you know, Florida State, Miami, those people used to beat us. We went out and we got speed. Booker may be the slowest guy back there, and he runs 4-5. Third, still 14. Good night. Easy play for Des Moines Adams. Almost like he wasn't touched at the line because he was in a full well, sprint when he got to the quarterback. Reggie Duncan, number 11, was supposed to pick him up. He had the blitzer, and when they shifted the line, here's the outside guy that he had to pick up, and he looked at Adams and said, this guy looks a little big for me to be handling, and Adams just blew by him. And, but that speed again, that speed up front. That's a big guy with speed. 6'2", 240 pounds. Can Terrell manufacture another first down? Gross waits back for the punt. They set up for the return for Dewan Gross. At the 38, Gross making a miss. Look out. He's got a couple of blocks. Can he turn the corner? He'll run out of real estate, going out of bounds inside the 45. Great job by Dewan Gross. So three and a half minutes into the contest, Nebraska setting up in Kansas field position, Kansas territory, and unfortunately, the field judge. Scott Gaines. Shook the Down shot the over there. Line. Good to see he's talking to him. Referee Ehlers, he looks okay. Offensively, Eric Crouch, Heisman Award candidate. 
senior from Omaha's Miller North High School. And Nebraska is going to get to the line, so we'll set the offensive line after the first snap. Eric Crouch didn't put together spectacular numbers. We talked about it, James, last week. In fact, a career low with only 21 yards on the ground on 13 carries. But all the little things that he did, the gadget play, the way he took it, and then he pulled away for how, people. How about the close-up with that goatee on it? <laughs> like it. There's the gadget play last week. And when I talk about the numbers, don't forget the intangibles that he brought. And you and I were talking about the 19-yard run deep in their own territory. And, and I think you throw all those numbers out, and it was a win against Oklahoma, a team that had won 20 straight. They were number one. Nebraska was number two in the BCS poll. And so winning that game, I mean, nobody else could beat them. Phil Sims and, I mean, Chris Sims is a killer Chris. Either well, one. Chris probably couldn't beat him. Phil couldn't beat him either. But Chris Sims couldn't beat him. Threw four interceptions against him. And Eric Crouch made the plays that had to be made during the course of the bargain. It's all the way at the Kansas 43. In the eye formation. Diedrich, number two in the conference, rushing the football. And he's number two behind Ennis the Menace Haywood. Finally, 3 yard, 120.1. Because of the play of the offensive line. We talked about Crouch. But well, this offensive line is as good as you're going to find in the country. Volk, Fonati, Garrison, Rutherford, and Waldrop, they have done a sensational job, whether it's the run of the pass this year. Diedrich, Crewald gets the start due to the ankle injury for Judd Davies. Gibson, Thomas, the wide receivers, are the phenomenal. Tracy Wistrom, Grant's little brother. Good play. Knifing through to make Dwyer. the play. Nate Dwyer, yeah. the senior tackle from Stillwater, Minnesota. And in that 4-3, Zarkia Zara, 11. Defensively for Kansas. Dwyer, second team all Big 12 last year. Watkins, Hayes, and Charlie Dennis. Keep an eye on Marcus Rogers. All over the place. Atkinson leads them in sacks. And ATM may have the most speed out of the group. Davis and Ivy on the corners. Letourneau and Bryant are the safeties. Crouch throwing on third down. And wide of Dietrich. And A major tell. victory for Kansas. Eric Crouch is frustrated with himself. I mean, he had an easy layup pass and just overshot his receiver. What a wasted opportunity when you get the ball to the Kansas 43 on your first possession. Yeah, but you have to credit Nate Dwyer on second down making that big run stop. That really set it up. That's against the number one team in the nation in running the football. And you have to wonder, Nebraska, after the big game last week, do they come out flat this week? Roger Ross. Second best in the conference in returning punts at 15 per try. As Larson put it into the end zone, Larson was a major weapon in the Oklahoma game. He had five punts down inside the 20, but his net there is only 18 yards. Break for Kansas. Good stand defensively. They've got it their own 20. We totally agree with that placard, that little <laughs> sign. I think that's me in particular. It rocks. It rules. I like the terminology, too. First and 10, Kansas at the 20-yard line. Major victory. Nebraska hasn't scored yet. Five minutes into the contest. Joel Myers, along with James Lofton, Eric Clemens down on the sideline. And Mario Kins is Super Mario. Will he be that tonight? An experienced quarterback running the option and letting the pursuit slide by. Losing the football on the crack. And it comes over to J.P. Wichman. What a shot by Justin Smith, though. That was a freight train he never saw. Boy, he, he really didn't. Made a great move to cut back against the grain. One of the things that he will learn the more football that he plays is you always want to carry the ball as close to your chest as possible. When he makes a cutback, the ball is a little bit away from his body, right there, oh, and it just gets knocked right out of his hands. You must tuck that ball away. I mean, he's running with it like he's playing tag at the park on Saturday afternoon. Well, they tagged him and the ball came out. It is not flag football tonight in Lawrence. So Nebraska takes over on the first turnover of the contest. That's one thing Kansas has done very well. They haven't given it away. From the 29, Dietrich trying to get out of the backfield, spilled in the backfield. Marcus Hayes, the senior from Fashion High School in St. Louis. Fashion with a great play as we check in with Eric Clemens. Eric. Well, guys, fans just tuning in might be a little confused. Uh, no, Nebraska is not wearing white at home, <laughs> but uh, they are in Lawrence, Kansas Memorial Stadium. And I have understood from some people looking around that between 25 and 35,000 Nebraska fans have bought tickets to this one to make it a sellout here tonight, guys. All right, Eric, it may be more as they toss it for Dietrich. Breaking tackles. 
And he goes inside the 26 to the 25. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to our College Football Saturday studio with Kevin Frazier. Kevin. Joel, thanks a lot. Texas taking on Baylor this afternoon. Chris Sims rolling. He has been red hot. He hits Roy Williams, who, hit, who had six catches for 147 yards. No problems for Texas as they win 49 to 10. They remain in the Big 12 championship pitch. And the efficiency of Chris Sims. He was letter perfect last week as well. Thank you, Kevin. Running the option on third down. Will Dietrich get there? Yes, plenty of room. As he gets into the secondary inside the 15-yard line, Laterno made the stop, but not after. He got more than enough. Second pass to the Big 12 behind Haywood. I mean, we all know what Eric Crouch can do running the option. He holds the ball until the last second. But down at the end of the play, Wilson Thomas blocks the cornerback off the field, all the way off the field to give his running back a lane to run through. I talked to Ron Brown, the receivers coach before the game. I told him, you had the best blocking receivers I've ever seen. He said, well, hopefully I can tell him that on Monday when we watch the film. Freewald, who's subbing for Judd Davies, gets his first carry of the night. Davies out with the ankle injury. Nate Dwyer plugs that hole. Big guy, 5'10", 255 pounds. Davies has already got a 100-yard game this year. Yeah, and Crewall is back from an ankle injury himself, too. And See all those different pads he has on? I saw these guys at the walkthrough yesterday. And they're big, but they're not as big and imposing as they look on game day when they put those pads on. Loss of a yard at the 15, second and 11. Option for Crouch and Dietrich, and they set it off pretty well. Atkinson really held his ground to set it up for Letourneau. Well, Eric Crouch making great decisions every step of the way this year. And James, you like him right now well, I, in the Heisman. I, I like him, and obviously we've talked about Eric Crouch. Ken Dorsey, Miami's having a fantastic year. You know, it's the funny, Miami's going through the controversy about whether they're going to get into one of those top two slots. Rex Grossman put up some phenomenal numbers today. And Deshaun Foster, the only true running back in the Heisman Trophy race around the country. Well, sometimes you get a sack because you beat your man, and sometimes you get a sack because someone blows an assignment. That time, the right tackle, Waldrop, stepped out to block the blitzing linebacker, but he had Dietrich there who was going to pick up the linebacker, and there was no one to pick up Dwyer. And if Dwyer is going to run straight at your quarterback, nine times out of ten, he's going to make the sack. And Josh Brown pushed it. So right now, nothing working for Nebraska offensively. They can't finish after starting twice in Kansas territory. 6.57 to play in the opening 15 minutes. Kansas living a charmed life. Turn for Frank Solich. They don't waste chances when it comes to the Cornhuskers of Lincoln, but they just missed a 37-yard field goal. And now... The other running back, no, it is Reggie Duncan. Reggie Duncan just hammering it straight ahead between center and guard. And he's got it all the way to the 27 where he runs into Scott Shanley. Best run of the night by far for the Jayhawks. Well, television's most unique brand of football commentary airs Sunday, NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net. This week, Bengals running back Corey Dillon joins the gang in the studio. Jay Moore is going to visit the Cowboys. Boomer puts Jerome Pettis under the Cyber Strader. NFL this morning tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Duncan trying to find any little scene. Now he runs out of raising room because of Justin Smith. Boy, it almost looked like Nebraska was in the huddle that time. I mean, they stacked that side. And, you know, they may have a tip as to where they're going to run the football. And Mario Kinsey, being a young, inexperienced quarterback, kind of, you know, in a neutral side here, may not want to check out of plays and is just sticking to the play that comes in from the sideline. Well, his head coach, Terry Allen, said he's getting better every week. But, boy, he may be one of the most inconsistent guys in the country. You don't know what you're going to get. Third and a big three. Almost four. And not even close to Derek Mills. Good coverage by Pat Ricketts, but way off target. And, and you know what? That route really didn't give him a secondary receiver. The three receivers lined up on the left. The two out, the outside and the inside guy just streaked deep. And you had the inside guy trying to get 
getting it right at the down and distance marker, and that was the only option that he had to throw the football. Dewan Gross, second best of the Big 12 Conference, waiting for the punt from Chris Durrell. They should get sensational field position once again. No pressure on Terrell. Got a short one. Oh, that, that hit, hit Sweeney. Up. That hit Sweeney. It hit Erwin yes, Sweeney. It it's picked up by Bookman the Jayhawks. Now, will they give it to Kansas? Big play by Leo Brooklyn. Taylor is coming up. It looks like they're going to say oh. it belongs to Nebraska. There may be a conference over this one. We'll find out when we come back, but it did look like it hit a Husker. Right now, they're saying Nebraska's got the ball. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Welcomes you once again to Lawrence, Kansas. First down, Cornhuskers. And will they go with a gadget? Trying to go on the double reverse. They pitch it. It didn't work. To Ben Zajcek. He fell down. Ben loses about five yards on the play back at the 36. Joel Myers, James Lofton, along with Eric Clemens. And Nebraska just can't get it going offensively despite great field position. But back to that punt. Did it hit a Husker or not? Well, it's going to hit Matt Jordan, number 23, right there. But then it ricochets off Sweeney, so I was half right. <laughs> but once it does that, <laughs> it's possession that goes to Nebraska, and it's a dead ball. You're dead. The ball's dead. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> off half on that. right. The crouch on the option. He's, he's got a, He's got now. Big yardage. Man, he's got a first down, lowering his shoulder across the midfield stripe. Eric Crouch going out of bounds. He should have a first down. Lineman coming up, yes, at the 48 by a yard. He's run for more than 3,000. That's all-time best in Cornhusker history. By better, almost at that, well, over 1,000 now after that run. And he's thrown for over 4,000 yards. And, and the numbers by Steve Taylor, Tommy Frazier, they're impressive. But you have to remember, this is an eye-back first oriented offense. They're in Kansas territory. Started the first two drives with the Jayhawks 43 and 29. That's why it's such a shock that they haven't scored yet. Missed field goal by Josh Brown of 37 yards. Breaking tackles. Dietrich, the power back, brought down by Carl Ivey. We'll see Thunder Collins. Collins was effective and he didn't have it much. Only four carries last week. But good yardage on first down. Almost seven for Darren Dietrich. The first recruit scholarship player they've ever gone after from Canada. Junior from Scarborough, Ontario. Now they've got two more. I mean, he worked out so well. He said, let's get a call. I know Patrick Cabango is the backup defensive end for him. Second and George for the Huskers. Dietrich on the high handoff. He'll take on tacklers, won't he? He did. Marquise Hayes. And a first down. Well, behind this offensive line, and Bonitou asking out for a he, he lost a shoe. I've seen more shoes lost on this field turf stuff. I don't know if it's because they don't tie them up real tight. You know, when you come around, you pull, you're looking for somebody to run into. But the rest of the offensive linemen are knocking everybody so far off the ball, they didn't get anybody to block until the second game. It's John Rutherford, the right guard. On first down, play fake, Eric Crouch. Great grab, Tracy Wistrom. You know, the tight end, super hands. That's a great grab, and that's a desire play because Tracy Wistrom is still not 100%. As he's dragging his leg. He has a knee brace on his knee that he injured about a week and a half ago in practice. There it is. You see it on his left knee. And they're going to say that it was a trap when he came down. He lost it. Yeah, I think he, he extended so far that when he did come down, and this is not being able to run, he extends. You see the great hands. But that ball is out when he hits the ground. Good You're going to see an even better camera. Now, these are great camera shots. These guys, our camera guys know when the ball is coming in their direction. There you can see the ball out and loose and then bounce up into his stomach. Right, that's a super call by this Big 12 officiating crew as well. Crouch setting up the screen. Thunder Collins. Inside the 30. Just, down to the 29. Just a little off. I think Thunder Collins got out a little early. He needs to sit and wait. He used to tell running backs you count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then go. They tell the linemen to count 1,001. Not because they're not smart, but they want to get out there quick. Young man out of Manual Arts High School in the city in Los Angeles. Well, my high school used to play Manual Arts. in the same league, the Southern League, Washington High School, Manual Arts. I told him that, and I said, we used to beat your school. Another Heisman candidate is coming up next on Fox Sportsnet, Joey Harrington of the Oregon Ducks. Stay with us all night. Great doubleheader. 
of college football against Arizona State. And Crouch using a timeout early. And the play clock was down to three. Well, Joey Harrington, you just talked about Eric Crouch as a Heisman hopeful. These numbers are only this season. Obviously, his record as a starting quarterback career-wise, he is 21-3, and three, but pretty strong number, 16 touchdowns, five interceptions. And I think the people seeing Joey Harrington play know that he's kind of the John Elway of college football because he is the master of the fourth quarter comeback. We remind you, college football, and we agree with that sign as well. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Kia Zera. One company, countless solutions. By Nissan, driven. By Renta Center, where you can get the best in electronics, furniture, and appliances. And by Shadow Hal, a new comedy from the <laughs> Farrelly Brothers, starring Gwyneth Paltrow, Jack Black. That is coming yeah, your that, way Friday. Actually, like it started yesterday. One that you want to own on video. Right now. <laughs> Through rose-colored glasses, oh Shadow God. Hal. <laughs> Just the trailers. Now, Eric Clemens was talking about it. It is hard to believe, but I would say there's at least 75% Nebraska fans here. It's only a three-hour drive from Lincoln. And we were talking to Chris Anderson, the SID Assistant Athletic Director at Nebraska. She said, this is our town. We come to Kansas City all the time. This yep. is where we come. We love it here. And the Huskers do. I sat in the lobby with a very nice 86-year-old lady from Omaha who said she wouldn't miss a Nebraska game for any reason. Thunder Collins in the eye. Crouch running the option. Diving. Now he may be short by about a foot. That's Marcus a, Rogers finally got him around the ankles. That's a good play by Marcus Rogers because he fights off the block of Crewall. You know, sometimes a middle linebacker can go unblocked, but this time he's engaged. He's going to get off the block of Crewall and come right back in our picture. Well, we're, we're watching some pancake work over there on the other side, but at the point of attack, he is Crewall, Marcus Rogers, and Marcus Rogers won. Trips in the backfield. Collins. Battling his way for the first down on fourth and about a foot thunder Collins, and he was off balance as he got it. Well, you had some great penetration up front. You get Marcus Hayes coming through, Marquise Hayes, number 93. He makes penetration. He makes Thunder Collins change his direction. And a lot of times on short yardage, a back will get so determined that even though there's penetration, he'll run into the penetration. That time, Thunder Collins did a nice job of stepping around it. So the drive that started at the Nebraska 41, first time they've started a drive on their third possession of their own territory tonight, it continues at the Kansas 23. Up man, Prewald, that was tough. Or make it Paul Castle instead. He got in there. Prewald, the last snap. Castle, the junior from Lincoln. As those are the two with Judd Davies out with the ankle injury and nothing doing. It was shut down completely. And Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, you know, he's faced this offense a number of times at different locations. And he said, it's not about me learning what they do. It's about my players learning what they do. And there's Tom on the sideline. And he said, the other thing, we don't get so caught up with just playing Nebraska. We want to play our brand of football and execute on our own and not worry so much about what the defense is doing, the offense is doing right now. In the eye formation. They're coming. Definitely coming. Prewald out of the backfield. Very little of the 20-yard line. Maybe two. ATN all over him, the weak side backer, the transfer from Hutchinson Community College out of Winter Haven, Florida. And that's a good job of assignment football because when you blitz, normally what happens, people forget, hey, somebody has that fullback. Everybody wants to get after the quarterback and people forget their assignment. That's good assignment football. And I saw ATN on a, a little news blip, and he's one of the brightest guys on the team. Came here for academics first football second. Collins is single. Three wide receivers set to the wide side of the field. Crouch looking for the first down marker, and I think his knee was down a I yard shy. Letourneau got him, got him short of the first down marker. Let's see where they mark it, but I think Laterno put him down about a yard shy. They already converted on a fourth down of this drive. He got a great spot, but he still should be short. They're doing a nice job in, in what I call feathering it, where they realize it's the speed option, and everybody starts to run to the sideline. You get good pursuit from the safeties coming up, and there you see the knee and the ball down. Good job in spotting it by the officiating crew also. Well, Collins got it the last time, but last time they didn't have a single wide receiver to each side. Fourth and a yard, Crouch behind the whole line. Behind his sumo wrestlers. <laughs> He's got a first down. <laughs> Fonity, in particular, they list him at 6'4", 340. If He's 340, then I am, I've got 4% body fat and I'm 160. But you know, the, the great thing about Fonity is he has a birthday coming up later this month. 
turns 20. He was 17 years old when he was playing here as a freshman. College football Saturday presented by Kia Cerro. We'll come right back to Lawrence. At the end of the first quarter, Jayhawks are winning. It is scoreless. Welcome back to, I won't say Little Lincoln, we're in Lawrence, but it seems that way. It's scoreless after one. Earlier this week, oh, new nominees goodness. for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and good to see that they recognize my partner, richly deserved, second all-time, and better than 14,000 receiving yards, and James Lofton, I congratulations. Had, I had no I idea hope you we are a lock, a first ballot unanimous decision, well, partner. Thank you very much, and you know, I think that right now, Kansas, they have their backs against the wall, ball inside the 12-yard line, so they played well defensively. Are these, I thought these would be in black and white. Now, it was Lynn Dickey, it was Jim Kelly, you finished up with the Raiders, and you, I guarantee you, you had cold feet on this one because you didn't want to put your feet on that snow. No, it's a little, little <laughs> icy there, and look at the high step, and I tried to jump, but there was no spring left in the legs at that point of their career. So we get ready for the first snap. And first in 10 Huskers, crowd short side of the field. Yeah, what a play as they rip him down from behind. Crouch is lucky. He's going to be able to stay in the game after a hit like that. You know, that they've got such good depressed effort on the outside defensively. We talked about they haven't had the advantage of field position. Kansas has not. But defensively, you just go out and play. Your back's up against the wall. And you hear the fans here. They saw the replay. They thought that there was a little face mask penalty there. Well, they didn't get the call. And when I say the fans here, we've talked about how many Nebraska fans are in attendance. Well, James, it was Travis Watkins that looked like he got the cage and got away with it. Second and eight, almost nine. There goes the running back. Dietrich's in on the counter play. A little trap. Touchdown, Nebraska. Darren Dietrich. All the pursuit coming one way, the counter the other. Way too easy on that snap. Great deception by the Huskers, partner. Yeah, but you know what? It's deception, but it's also knocking people off the football. Linemen staying on their blocks. I mean, you go untouched from the 10-yard line to the gold line. You're getting some good blocking up front and also good blocking down the field from the wide receivers again. Josh Brown for the point after. And 48 seconds into the second quarter, Nebraska's on the board. It's Darren Dietrich, number two in the Big 12 in rushing. Seven and nothing Huskers. Keep that little guy warm. Good idea. Smile on his face. He must be a Husker fan. They're up seven and nothing. Our Reno Center, Big 12 North standings. Nebraska in control. Colorado, who they'll see on November 23rd. At 5 and 1 after the win over Mizzou today. They had a scare against Missouri at home today, though. They only let it by three at the half. End of three, they're only up 24 21. Quincy Rowe and Fulton waiting back. Josh Brown bombs it away. It'll stay in the end zone now. Downstairs we go, Eric. All right, guys, you know Darren Diedrich, who just scored that touchdown, is becoming quite a reliable workhorse in this Nebraska offense. He's averaging 21 and a half carries a game and 5.6 yards a pop. He had 32 carries against Notre Dame. That was a career high and most ever by a back since Frank Solich took over as head coach here four years ago. So you talk about balance on the Nebraska offense running the ball. Darren Diedrich, one of the reasons why, guys. All right, Eric and Frank Solich. Recent weeks, we've had Nebraska. This is our third time now. He said he loves the way he wears out a defense. They'll give it to Reggie Duncan, who takes his shoulder in the chest, goes down. Kelsey wrapped him up finally after a gain of a yard, yard and a half. Well, the best damn sports show comes your way once again on Fox Sports Net. Weeknight, 7.30, 11.30. Join us. Critics calling it a collision of sports and comedy. Just what you've been waiting for. The best damn sports show, period. Two years ago, I couldn't get away with saying that on the air, could I? You still can't. <laughs> Second and long. You're going to have to wash your mouth out. Be right back. I'll do it myself. Feel guilty. Second and nine from the 21. Kinsey. And the D-back fell down, enabling the wide receiver Byron Gassaway to get the first down. Willie Ames fell down on the play. Could have gone for a big gainer. Good recovery, though. Yeah, but nice blocking up front. We get Justin Hartwig, speed guy outside him. So he, he's going to have to step to his outside. Here's the left side line. And a nice job picking up that stunt. But there's Hartwig up top. He does a nice job in getting that seal and 
Byron Gasaway's a new starter this week, a big physical presence outside. Duncan pounds it, nothing there, a yard and a half or two once again. And I like the footwork because the Kansas coaches have been talking about the footwork of Mario Kinsey. That time he really established position as he squared up and threw it. Yeah, and you know, they, they said it's still a learning process. You know, last year he's playing basketball, didn't go through the spring, and a new coaching staff, some new techniques. So, you know, there's been a lot of new learning for him, but there, there's no question that he has the talent. When you talk to other coaches from around the conference, they say this is a guy who can make things happen in the next couple of years in the Big 12. Third and long. Two and a half minutes into the second quarter with Nebraska on top by seven. Man of timeout called Down by the one. Jayhawks. So they've used their first of the first 30 minutes of play. Will they convert? We'll find out. Or will the Huskers get the ball back? They just snapped it before we came back, and Mario Kinsey thought he could run for the first down. He was already past the yeah, but original just, line of scrimmage, though. He does a great though. job in escaping the pocket, and it's that initial quickness. I mean, right past the lineman, and then he breaks out, and he sees, what, well, one, two, three, four, Nebraska defenders. And he, maybe he played baseball, too, because he knows how to slot. So now a third and long. The ball of the 34. Oh. Kinsey in trouble. Forget about it. The linebacker, Scott Shanley, put him down, picking it up. The Huskers bring it in. It looked like he was down. Kelsey takes it into the end zone. They're going to say he's down. Back at the 20 yard line. Huskers don't quit on the play, though. Boy, a great blitz on the right side. Was he down, though? Shanley ran right past Justin Hartwig. Boy, he lost the ball while he was on top of Shanley. Did maybe, he ever touch the ground? Maybe they're saying because he's going backwards, his momentum has stopped, and we're trying to protect the quarterback. They waved that dead before he really hits the ground. Still, Nebraska's going to get it. Great field position. Terrell will put it away for the third time already. And field position in the Nebraska game against Oklahoma was the difference. It's Keo Craver. He is going back deep, along with DeJuan Gross. Plenty of time for Terrell. And he finally gets into it. It'll be Craver from the 30. And he lost his balance immediately. Still got it back, though, to the 35-yard line. And I was talking about that field position. How important is that? Nebraska's average start last week, their own 36. Oklahoma's. It was back of their own 20. That is a huge difference. Our Intel trivia. Who are the quarterbacks for Kansas and Nebraska? The last time Kansas beat the Huskers in 1968. Most of the fans around the nation now in Lincoln, they obviously know who it was in 1968. But around the nation, I think you'd remember the Kansas quarterback a little bit easier than the Husker quarterback from the 35 because he did make his mark of the NFL as well. Diedrich doesn't quit. Wheels are spinning out to the 36 yard line. Glenn Robinson the outside backer brings him down. You know, if you're going to run up the middle your center and your guard have to learn to work together. They're both stepping to their right and they just push there. The other guard comes around steps around their pile and you get movement in the middle. It's not, it's not complicated what they're doing. They're just effective at doing it. Crouch on the play fake, bringing it back the other way. Tight ends available. Man. Ringenberg, the junior from Elkhorn, Nebraska, has a first down all the way inside the 40, the 39. Andrew Davison making the stop. Now, we, we saw the movement up front last time. Watch the offensive line. They all step as if it's the same play that they had just run. I like what Ringenberg does is he heads directly up the field. You dodge one person, you try and split two. You try to split those two defenders at the end. That's good aggressive running. Five minutes into the second quarter, all Nebraska. Dietrich looking for blocks, hurdling wow. tacklers. He's got another first down, and they finally get him. All the way inside the 25, the 22. Bryant from behind the free safety. He's already got 
better than 60 yards on 11 carries. I mean, they do a nice job in, in spilling this play. Marquise Hayes, Charlie Dennis, right at the point of attack. But if the running back can just hurdle over you, I mean, that's an impressive run. 66 yards, 11 carries are FedEx air and ground numbers for Nebraska. 110 total, James, compared to only four for the Jayhawks. Uh, and you know that that's about on average for both teams because Kansas average has given up 418 a game. Crouch option in Diedrich. They finally hunt him down. Shy of the 20. Only two on the carry. Nate Wire up and down the line. And he has been consistent since the start. My favorite hat in the house tonight. <laughs> well, I think I'll get you one of those for your birthday. If you're thinking red zone offense, you have to think we need to stop Eric Crouch first. Kind of because he's very effective here. But I also think if you're Frank Solich, you want to get your guy in the end zone to get him those votes. Because, it, you know, this is about the big picture, winning games and all that. But, I, you know, if I'm the coach, I'd like to see my guy get in the end zone and get the high control. So far, Crouch has six carries for 20 yards. He's three of five passing for 30 yards. And on a nice play fake again going underneath. This time with the wide receiver, Wilson Thomas. But it's played Jamari perfectly by Jamari Bryant. Bryant, the free safety, wouldn't let go. And he was out on an island. There wasn't support behind him. And Jamari Bryant, we had looked at a scouting report on Deion Booker earlier. But let's watch the play of Jamari Bryant because here he is. He doesn't go for the fake, and then he's able to come up and make the play. It's one-on-one -on -one against the wide receiver out in the middle of the field. And that's what you have to be able to do and put Roadrunner because this guy is the fastest runner of all the Jayhawks, and he's also from Phoenix, Arizona. He's the last line of defense, and he really is like having an extra cornerback back there with the speed that he has. Third. And a little over three, shorts out of the field for Darren Dietrich. Can they get him out of bounds? Yes, they did. He's short of where he needed to go. Greg Cole stuffed it on the sideline, the junior from Miami. So they went short side, and they ran out of room. He's short by a couple of yards. And Solich is thinking about going for this. And then he thought better of it. Now they're only one of six so far on their third down conversions. And, and he's frustrated because we all know about the big win last week against Oklahoma. And it is human nature. It's human nature to want to take all the accolades and, oh, it's only Kansas. But guys in blue are playing defense. 32-yard attempt on its way, and Josh Brown gets it together after missing a 37-yarder early in the contest. So it's Nebraska by 10. A very efficient beginning. It could be worse, though, if you're a Kansas Jayhawk fan. With 8.27 to play in the half. And the kickoff from Josh Brown. It is going to be Gassaway from his own five. And good yardage as he's popped out by Josh Brown. No, he popped Josh Brown. Normally kickers can sneak up on guy. He didn't sneak up on Gassaway that time. Gassaway squared those shoulders and popped him. Now we had our Intel inside trivia earlier. The quarterbacks for Kansas, Nebraska, 1968 the year. Ernie Sigler on the short end for the Huskers. Bobby Douglas, the winner. The southpaw who made his name running the football for the Chicago Bears. My teammate, 1978, he finished the season with the Green Bay Packers. Right there with Lynn Dickey. Yes, he did. Well, Lynn Dickey had broken his leg. Yeah. New quarterback in, it's Zach Dyer taking over the sophomore from Olathe, Kansas. Looking to throw on first down. And a great throw on the move to his fullback, Wabuzi, the redshirt freshman from Houston. A first down fired up as Wabuzi. And a big hit on the boundary, but also a roughing the passer call, I believe, on the quarterback, Zion. But they're walking back in the opposite direction, so maybe holding. Looked like the quarterback got hit late also. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, still first down. Well, prior to that snap, only four yards on 15 snaps offensively, so. Zach Dyer, you could see the frustration on his face. He makes a great throw on the run, but it's coming back. And when we talked to the coaching staff, they told us Zach will play, and it's not a knock against Mario. We just want to get him some snaps in there so that he can get on the field and show what he can do also. 10 to nothing, Nebraska. Deeper hole now for Kansas. His high school won last night, Olathe, 48 to 0 in the playoffs. In his honor, I'm told. <laughs> Out of the gun. Little bubble in the air. You don't want to touch it. Although it was deflected, the lineman thought about it. And that's Bob Smith. When you get man-to-man -man on that bubble screen, 
you have to be able to have a, a down the field threat because if your guys just take one step up the field and then trying to come back under and the defensive back is right on top of them there's nowhere to throw the football. You know, Roger Ross, you can see the conversation with Zach Dyer, college football Saturday. He'll continue. Oregon's Joey Harrington leading the Ducks at home against Arizona State. Reggie Duncan says, hey, you go over the middle. Or not Reggie Duncan, actually Roger Ross at 5'7", 185. So second and 20 looks like second and two miles against Nebraska's defense. Reggie Duncan, he got a little deep with not much to work with. Shanley forcing him to the sideline and out of bounds for a loss. They run so well at each and every position. You're trying to run the option, get down the line, but there's Shanley. He's looking at the quarterback, but he can also take the pitch man because it's running to the short side. Reggie Duncan is not a true option back that has real breakaway speed, but he's the fastest back that Kansas has. Mario Kinsey, in support of his teammates, he is not hurt. He's not hurt at all. They just wanted to get Zach Dyer in there. And now... A dire situation. Third and 24, back at the nine. Oh, he's going to get lit up. Well, <laughs> not quite as he's wrapped up. Roger Ross, Willie Amos, kind to him. The free safety and a punting situation. So no offense at all for Kansas uh, against the fifth best defense in the nation. Nebraska only gives up 265 yards a game. They should improve upon that tonight. I mean, everybody ran it and raved about how good Oklahoma's defense was. And I think Craig Bowl put it best a few weeks ago. He said, you know, we don't have a lot of star power in our defense. We don't have guys who are contending for the Butkus Award and all these other awards, but we play so well together as a team, and they're so unselfish. And they have great depth, too. We're seeing backups in the ball game early in the second quarter. Terrell bombs out of beauty. It is going to be Keo Craver again, back at around the 30-yard line lookout. Craver spinning his way. He's got a couple of blocks. Can he know the distance? No. Brought down by Terrell at the 21-yard line. You just can't get around Chris Terrell. That's the problem. Great return, though, by Keo Craver. You know, it is rare to see one spin move in a game, but... There's one, so he's watched Barry Sanders a lot. We have to remember, this is a guy who ran for over 3,000 yards his senior year in high school, had four 250-yard games, and, you know, chasing him is no fun. But there's Banks Floodman. He's trying to run him down and find the ball. He says, there's a spin move. I'll catch up to him sooner or later. I'll spin around and try and catch him. From the 21, <laughs> first down, Thunder Collins. He'll spin his way inside the five. Touchdown, Nebraska. Took a long time on that drive. So Nebraska starts with it for the third time deep in Kansas territory. And they're ready to run away and hide now. Thunder Collins gives you that great finisher. You get inside that red zone near the 20-yard line, you know that he can take it the whole distance. It's a shame he doesn't know he's on TV. <laughs> Brown for the point after. Young man from Los Angeles. It's going to the nation. I want some face time. But it was all set up by Keo Craver. The long return. And the finisher, like James Lofton was just saying, the home run. Thunder Collins. Those are brave souls. I you got to believe it. They're outnumbered, James, and here they are supporting their Jayhawks. But that's family. That Nate Dwyer's <laughs> mom there in the middle. I believe I saw her sand around. She had, well, up here. This one right there. There's mom up there. Yeah. She's number 92 written on her back. So that's homemade fans. Oh, that's great. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by the Dwyers and by Kia Sera. One company, countless solutions. And by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Also by Shadow Hal, a new comedy from the Fairley Brothers, starring with Paul Pro Jack Black, comes Friday. 17 to nothing, Nebraska. There's Nate, young tyke, small fellow, bringing it back to Maine Fulton. And Fulton battling across the 25. Good return out to the 28-yard line. Best field position to start a drive for Kansas so far tonight. Next week, our college doubleheader. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sera. Washington, Oregon State. Washington led late over Stanford today. Colorado matching up with Iowa State. James, we are going to be in Ames.
It all starts 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. And that is a big ball game for Colorado trying to stay in a position where that last game of the season against Oklahoma, Nebraska means a lot. From the 28, Reggie Duncan adjusting his schedule, altering the route for five out to the 33, tripped up by Deion Booker. They've got to get Duncan going, though, just to keep Nebraska's offense off the field. But you can make a good run, get a nice hole, and because of the speed of the Nebraska defense, it closes so quickly. I mean, that's really been the emphasis, and we've seen it all around the league. Texas taking linebackers, making them into defensive linemen, taking strong safeties and making them into linebackers. The same is true for Nebraska. Great speed on defense. That's the best we've seen on first down for Kansas. Dyer calling his own number and paying for it. Maybe a yard at the most to the 34. Let's check in once again with Eric Clements. Eric. And guys, defensive coordinator Craig Bull of Nebraska has plenty of troops to send out to keep his defensive players fresh. He goes three deep at the rush end, three deep at defensive tackle, and many rotations in the secondary, and it's paid off so far. 20 different players have had a hand in the team's 31 sacks, nine different players in its 14 interceptions, and six different players have recovered fumbles. That's a lot of troops to send out an opposing offense. I noticed that Dwan Gross and Keo Craver, the starting corners, don't come off the field very often. <laughs> no. no, not for special teams either. Dyer, short side dunk and option. Good night. No gain on the carry. And so they Keo didn't even try to throw the ball. At a punting situation, they are, the Jayhawks, are the fifth worst completion percentage-wise in the country. You know, we talked about how well the receivers for Nebraska block and that's effort right there. You're going up against the linebacker and you expect a little bit of a, a mismatch there but nice job by Byron Gasway going in there and sticking T.J. Hollowell. Graver and Gross back again for the Terrell punt. Another three and out. Kansas is 0 for 6 on third down tries. It's a highlight night for Terrell isn't it? And what a play back at the 15 as Matt Jordan did a number on Keo Graver. And see, Erwin Sweeney is upset here because he blocked his guy to the outside, and then Keo Craver tried to run outside instead of up the alley. Craver thinks he did so well on that last return. Well, earlier today in the Big 12, Texas, no problems taking on Baylor. Texas Tech shutting out number 24, Texas A&M. The biggest shot, Kansas State. They finally took out their frustrations on somebody. They pounded Iowa State in Ames. Mizzou played it tough, but Colorado prevailed in Boulder. And the final one, Oklahoma cruising. Crouch trying to alter his route. Pulling him down, though, the outside backer, Leo Etienne. So Nebraska comes into the game 9-0. This is only their third road game of the year. You talk about an advantageous schedule. First time since 1905 they've had eight home games. But look at the tail end of the schedule. Everybody's talking about the Colorado game. That's that's a tough one. But Kansas State played so well last week against Kansas. And then well again this week. They're a team that's getting better as the season is getting older. And they're trying to get into a position where they're bowl eligible. Second and nine for Crouch of the Huskers. Darren Dietrich shut down by Marcus Rogers. With a middle linebacker, the senior from Roosevelt High School in Dallas. Got enough of Dietrich to throw him off balance. And that is tough with the kind of start that Dietrich has had. 14 carries, 71 yards tonight. But Rodgers, the leading tackler, one of the very best in the Big 12. A little ice on the knee of Tracy Wistrom right there. That leg had been bothering him. He hurt it about a week and a half ago in practice. Eric, what is the latest on Tracy Wistrom? Well, obviously, you can see with the ice pack guys that he's aggravated that left knee injury that's been bothering him for several weeks, actually. His return to the game tonight is doubtful. He's just going to try to rest it out and be a valuable weapon later in the season when the Cornhuskers are needed. All right, Eric, he stayed out of the Texas Tech game to try to get ready for Oklahoma. And now on third down, Crouch in trouble. It's batted into the air. What a play. Andrew Davison in the face of Eric Crouch. They couldn't find the ball. Finally felt Algie Atkinson, maybe the closest to it, who leads them in sacks. And that would have been a great play that would have given them a lot of momentum. Now they need to capitalize on this defensive stop 
They have a chance to get good field position here. In the face of Crouch before he could respond. And Kyle Larson with only his second punt will punt it away to Roger Ross. He was the Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week for his efforts against Oklahoma. Low line drive wobbler. Ross will take it on a hop. Getting into the outside. He gets a little chip to the outside. Breaks a tackle across the 45. And this is like living in Beverly Hills right now for Kansas. They've got the ball <laughs> to their own 48-yard line. What is it like living in Beverly Hills? <laughs> I wouldn't know, but you I'll tell, tell me. you. The midfield strike for Kansas against the fifth best defense in the nation. Moving on up. <laughs> I, I would have to say you're right with them. So they've got it at the 48 after Nebraska. For only the second time tonight, went three and out with a punt. And it's once again going to be Zach Dyer out there, not Mario Kinsey, the redshirt freshman from Waco. And if you're going to have Zach Dyer in, who's a more accomplished passer, you need to take advantage of that. Let's see if they do throw it. They've got two in the backfield, three in the wide receiver position. Pocket collapses on Dyer. And who else but Chad Kelsey got away from his block, peeled away from the lineman Justin Hartwig. Kelsey gets him, the junior from Auburn, Nebraska. This has been an absolutely unbelievable year for Kelsey. It really has been. He's just turned his play up so much, you know, on a, on a unit where you're subbing guys in and out. He makes plays. He runs after the ball. Talked about him a couple weeks ago being relentless and almost needing to turn down that motor so that he doesn't get any late hit penalties. Loss of a yard, second and 11. And Dyer again, he wanted to run it before he even looked downfield, almost like it was a quarterback draw. Called it right away. Casey Nelson. And Eric was just talking about the way to go 2 3 deep. Nelson, the backup nose tackle, the senior from Newman Grove, Nebraska. And, and you know, players are pretty smart. And, and all the players on the team realize if you're going to run a quarterback draw, you'd rather have Mario Kinsey in running it. But trying to cross up Nebraska a little bit, thinking that they're thinking like I'm thinking up here. We're going to see pass, but you know, Kansas has not been able to move the ball at all. Six total yards for the game. Well, they're fortunate they're not negative territory right now. Free snap though. The basket jumped offside. Dyer, he ought to just try just to get throw it down the ball field. Upfield. Keep it in the field of play. And unfortunately, it's on the sideline for the Jayhawks. Curtis Ansel, the backup punter, far side of the field. And the motor starts a little early. We talked about that. And, you know, you heard that gentleman start the engine. The defense, five yards, repeat third down. Well, you talk about a Rodney Dangerfield complex, though. You haven't beaten a team since 1968. 32 consecutive wins. Notre Dame has beaten Navy 37 straight times. So Kansas has got to send Notre Dame thank you notes. <laughs> you're, you're catching up to them quickly. <laughs> 207 to play in the half. 17 to nothing. The Huskers. Third 10. Moving the pocket by design for Dyer. And it's almost intercepted. Almost taken away. Ricketts did a phenomenal job. The defensive back, the sophomore from Omaha. If you sprint out to the left and the defensive backs feel that they realize that the ball is not going to be thrown back to the right, they can make a jump on the ball and you're getting protection up front, but a great break on the ball. You see Pat Rickett just pattern reading. He understands what the flow of the play is and where they're trying to go with it. Combo of Craver and Gross waiting for the punt from Terrell. Terrell has had more touches tonight than the running backs for Kansas. That's the unfortunate part for the Jayhawks. And the other Gross taking it out of bounds. Great job by Terrell to keep him on the boundary. He'll be out. Close to the 10-yard line. Kevin Frazier and crew coming up at halftime with the Nissan Halftime Report along with Kevin Winslow, Artie Chicken All the scores and highlights are on the Big 12 and the nation. A breakdown of the Pac-10. We'll have Oregon and watch Arizona State coming up. And an update on the World Series. Matchup of lefties tonight. Andy Pettit and Randy Johnson. One of the things that great teams do, they finish off halves and games extremely well. And with a minute 55 to go in the first half, I would expect Nebraska being a great team to be able to move it down and score. They've got it outside of their own 10. And Crouch looks like he's changing the play with Thunder Collins in the backfield. He is going an audible. Wants to run the option. Will he ever get rid of it? No. He takes a shot, too, across yeah. the 15 to the 16 by Marquise Hayes. But he gets touched by defensive lineman. 
five yards down the line. That means the offensive line, Volk on the left side, Fono T, they're just getting great push. We talk about pancake blocks. What they're doing right now is they're pushing, they're keeping those guys on their feet, and they're just moving them backwards. If you're going to get to Nebraska, usually you better get to them in the first half. That's a problem for Kansas. Nebraska is best in the nation, giving up only an average of three points a game in the second half. So that's what we have to look forward to. Second and about four. There's the running back, Eric Crouch. Forget it when he starts to juke like that. ATN gives him a little bit of a trip, but he's got the first down. He just, he just gets a crease, and that's all Eric Crouch really needs. You get that kind of a, a lane to run through right in the middle of the field. And when you think college football on a two-minute drill, because the clock stops on first downs, you can be a little more deliberate. They'll get it off with about 50 seconds to play. Very nonchalant group of Huskers. Crouch with a wide open top. Up the end. field, up John the field. John Holding, <laughs> who dropped a couple in the Texas Tech game. He had a touchdown reception in that game as well, the junior from Lincoln. Brought down by Letourneau. Yeah, but a, a little bit of inexperience there at the tail end of the play. Because John Bowling, he's going to hook up. He's coming out of his tight end position. When he catches the ball, maybe go this way where there's no one. <laughs> he wanted to get back to the bench, obviously. Yeah, he, you know, tight ends, fullbacks, they look for contact. So Nebraska stops the clock. They've got one timeout remaining. And they've also got a 17-point advantage. College football Saturday presented by Kia Zara. It's a doubleheader after we leave you in Lawrence. It's on to the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Battling Joey Harrington, eighth-ranked Oregon Ducks. Great college football. Are we fortunate? Big 12 to Pac-10. Try to find two better conferences in college football this year. We are definitely spoiled. 43 seconds left. Timeout remaining for Nebraska. Oh, we were talking about Heisman hopefuls. What about the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award? They just announced the five finalists, and tonight on Fox Sportsnet, you're seeing two of them, Eric Crouch and Joey Harrington. You know what? And you could also put two more Big 12 guys who just missed that list, Cliff Kingsbury from Texas Tech, and also Chris Sims, who's really come around the last four weeks. I think he's thrown about 18 touchdown passes. And his completion percentage. Yeah. And just loading up on people. You know, once they got past the Oklahoma loss, they said, okay, guys, we need to start playing better. And they really have. Zach Dyer talking to his offensive coordinator, Rich Year, upstairs. Diedrich is the single. Now the shovel. Thunder Collins ripped down at the 48. Good job by Marcus Rogers. Algie Atkinson there as well. You know, you had the ball at the 41-yard line. I'd like to see a little more aggressive play calling from Frank Solich. Open it up. You know, you've run spread offenses. You've run all that. You wasted a lot of time with that eight-yard, seven-yard play there. Well, I'm surprised. And it was even the previous minute. And I said they were so nonchalant as it's thrown away on second. It'll be third and short coming up. Stopping the clock was 16 seconds. But when they got it back with a minute and 55, they wasted about a minute. They let it go. They, they huddled. It wasn't any sense of urgency. A couple of weeks ago against Texas Tech, we saw Keo Craver sprain an ankle, and it looks like he's favoring that left side a little bit. You can tell that they've had that sock off and probably examined that left ankle. So now third about three for the Huskers. They still have a timeout remaining. Josh Brown has a field goal in two attempts tonight. Can they get in range at least? Diving down, it's a first down on the reception by John Gibson. Go ahead and use your timeout here too. because you'll lose three seconds before the clock even gets running. Crouch isn't thinking about it, though. Got to move the chains. This does not hurt Nebraska. Put your hands under the center if you're going to spike the ball right now. What Susie, about a fake? Susie steps away. So there's the spike. He loses three seconds. I, I said three seconds. Did I say three seconds? Could we play That's that what back? happens in college football. You lose <laughs> three seconds. Now, but that was in Lincoln, though. There'd be nine seconds on the clock. Uh, it might be 11. <laughs> <laughs> what a half for the Huskers. Everything came so easy for them. Now, you still have the middle of the field. 
seven seconds, you can complete the same type of pass that you did before. And I saw Josh Brown warming up. He attempted a 60-yarder. He made one from 55. So he has the leg strength to get it there. You need about 15 yards on this play, though. Let's see if they can get the quick out that you're talking about. They still have a timeout anyway. They want to use the middle of the field, but they will use the boundary. And Wilson Thomas, the big target at 6'6", 215, gives the necessary yardage now to Josh Brown. And you're looking at about a 43-yard field goal attempt here, which is well within his range. And, and he's on the, the correct hash for a right-footed kicker because his ball is going to move from right to left with a slight draw on the try from 42 yards away right on target room to spare the final snap a 42 yard field goal for Josh Brown and the Huskers halftime in Lawrence Paul Nebraska 20 to nothing for the number two team of the nation Kevin Frazier and crew coming up right after this timeout with a Nissan halftime report A shutout so far. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah continues from Lawrence, Kansas. All Nebraska and only six yards of total offense for Kansas in the entire first half on 24 snaps. Joel Myers along with James Lofton. We knew it was going to be tough for the Kansas Jayhawks. Little did we know though it was going to be this tough. It has been a very impressive performance by the Black Shirts. And if you're a Kansas and on the coaching staff, you have to wonder where are all these guys coming from? Because every time your quarterback has a little bit of daylight, it seems like here comes another Nebraska defender. And Eric Clemens, you got a chance to talk to Terry Allen at halftime. Did he have any solutions for this Nebraska defense? No, uh, nothing X's and O's wise, James. Only mental stuff. He told me that he told his club at halftime, hey, have fun, play hard, have pride, and if we get a few breaks, we might be back in this ball game. That's all he had to say, James. Okay, Eric, thank you. Breaks? Well, you got to make your own. And the Jayhawks are one of the worst in the nation at making those in the third quarter. For their first seven games of the year, they are averaging in the third quarter 1.3 points per game. It is a long road. Going back, Josh Davis waiting for the kickoff. Johnny Beck, the freshman place kicker, one of the bright spots this year for the Jayhawks. Davis from the two. Lookout across the 30. And he's put down by the Jayhawks. Banks Floodman, one of their best on special teams. Well, where has Eric Crouch gone? <laughs> FedEx Express, and it has been expressed for Crouch. Now that, that's where's Waldo. But good pass distribution, got his running backs involved, and even got the tight ends involved. And remember the catch that Tracy Wistrom almost had early in the ballgame, so he really has spread the ball out to all his guys. So they'll all be happy on the way back to Lincoln. So Nebraska comes into the game averaging 37 points a game. That is 12th best of the nation, so they're on par offensively with 20 in the first half, and they've got it at their own 24. Pullback Krewald can't get away. ATN would not let go of him. 24 snaps, I mentioned, only six net yards offensively for Kansas. Two first downs, James, in the first half. Yeah, but you know what? Kansas has played well with the field position that Nebraska has. Look at the average starting drive on their 44-yard line. So hats off to the Jayhawks in the first half. We've got some Jayhawks working with us. Crouch on the move, Wilson Thomas, first down Nebraska. ATN, it is interesting how things work in life, isn't it? Our director, a Nebraska grad, our producer, a Kansas grad. We've got balance in the truck, don't we? We really do, and you talk <laughs> about balance offensively for Nebraska. When we talked to Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator, he said the toughest thing about Nebraska is they throw the ball so well this year that that is really the surprise element in their attack. Well, they do everything. And he was going on about the, the option, the eyes. They give it in, mo in motion to Thunder Collins. Nice play by but Algie Atkinson there. He's shut it off completely, the strong side linebacker. Tom Hayes said, you know, you try to defend one part of it. And there's the defensive coordinator for the Kansas Jayhawks in his first year here. He was with the UCLA for so many years, also with North Turner, the Washington Redskins. 
He said, but they run about four different types of offenses right. here that are very efficient. Yeah, they've got the power game. They've got the option game. they got the drop back and the play action passing. But what Tom Hayes' guys have done, they've been very physical at the line of scrimmage tonight. Loss of a yard. Dump off. Nice one-handed grab. The tight end, Ringenberg, we saw him earlier. That time, just got the big left paw out there. Jamari Bryant, well, so many newcomers to this staff for Terry Allen. Tom Hayes, Rip Shear, the two coordinators. Tom, coming from Washington. Rip, head coach at Memphis. James Pittman, Barr, Jones, Bowen. So you've installed a lot of new faces and a new system, too. And, and a lot of junior college transfers coming in, learning new techniques, and the guys who had been here a couple years prior to this new uh, assistant staff coming in had to learn the new techniques also. And that's tough. Option. Crouch a little bit behind. Darren Diedrich didn't make any difference, though, did it? Across the midfield stripe to the 48-yard line of Kansas. And then you have the experience. Frank Solich, for example, 19 years an assistant before he got the head coaching job, 23 years on the staff, and he's not senior in tenure there. Now you have uh, Milt Tepner and uh, Darlington, who've been on the staff a long time, and you even throw in a guy like Turner Gill, who played here, and they're running the same offense that he ran back in 1980 in 2001. First down, Huskers. Crouch. Couldn't get to it, though, Wilson Thomas, all 6-6. That was a throw that he could have put a little more air under it because his guy was wide open, but he looked at the corner route going the other way to John Gibson first. Then he came back to Wilson Thomas and said, I need to gun this ball to get it there in a hurry, and all six foot six inches of Wilson Thomas could not stretch out and get that ball. A little lull off the line of scrimmage, and then he turns it on, but he just fades a little bit to the outside, trying to widen the hole, and... Ball's on the money. You made a good point, though. I saw Gibson first, and he was available, too. Graywald breaking tackles down to the 45 for three. It'll bring up third and seven. But that's the kind of options that Eric Crouch has had tonight. They have been available downfield. And, and the offensive line, one of the things that Frank Solich said, one of the things that we don't do extremely well is just regular pass blocking. We do a great job in our play action and stuff like that. But I think the defensive linemen are so surprised when they see the offensive linemen pass set that they can't get off and attack the quarterback. Third and seven. Crouch in trouble early. What a shot that he gets out of the pocket. And then too tall for John Gibson. So a rare giveaway by Nebraska after they took it across the midfield stripe. And a pop at the end on Eric Crouch. And, and every week when I'm traveling, I see NFL scouts on the plane one of the names that they whisper a lot around this area is Algie Atkinson. They like his size. They like his speed. 6'5", 240 pounds. He can play that strong side defensive linebacker. He can also put his hand down and rush the quarterback from a defensive end position. So here's a guy who I think has a promising future in the NFL. He's third on their all-time sack list. Only two off the top spot. Nice catch, Kyle Larson, on the short hop. And Roger Ross. Takes it in on the fair catch. Back close to the 14. Well, it was a couple of seasons ago. 1999, Kansas taking on eighth-ranked Nebraska. Jayhawks got it done. Special teams helped out early. Big plays. Also, a long touchdown run by Mike Chandler. Terry Allen's team actually was tied with Nebraska in the fourth quarter. But, and a big one there. Eric Crouch on Bobby Newcomb. 49-yard score. Huskers won it 24-17 after Nebraska was down to the half. Don't forget here on Lawrence. Nine to nothing. So Kansas gets it. It was a phenomenal game, but they couldn't get it done in the fourth quarter. Gibbsy with Duncan. And Duncan breaks tackles. Barely taken down around the ankles by Jamie Burrow. And with only six yards on 24 snaps in the first half, anytime you get eight, ten yards on a run, it's a major development. Sure. And you, you pick up a first down, you get the... Uh the crowd involved in the game a little bit and, and Mario Kinsey who watched the last three series and that was almost a good thing because he was getting knocked around a lot. You go to the sideline you can look and see what the defense is doing and maybe now you can cope with it better. 11 on the carry for number 11 Reggie Duncan. We're not 11 this time. He loses a yard. We, we talked about Nebraska's offensive line being able to push Kansas and getting some push up there. The defensive line for Nebraska 
Very underrated. When you look at Selecta and Clanton and Kelsey and Adams, but boy, they penetrate. Super they, active. They, they really do. And then you get Jamie Burrow, the middle linebacker, who loves to creep up into the line of scrimmage to get up in the gap. Second, a little more than 10. And there he walks up into the gap. He's coming. And now the touch pass intercepted. Picked off by McPherson. And Kansas has turned it over. And, and he had him. You throw this ball beyond the defender where only your guy can get it. Had the matchup that they wanted. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage. You're going to get two blitzing linebackers. You get the coverage on the outside. He makes his move. His guy misses. And the ball is just underthrown into the inside. Safety was coming over as well. And some of that is, is from being on the sideline and, and watching and not being into the game and being just a little tentative on that throw because we all know what a strong arm Mario Kinsey has. And that time, he tried to feather it a little too much. Pearson's being helped off the field that drug down on that tackle. They float, bowling the tight end across the middle. A little crossing pattern. He's got a first down all the way down to the 35-yard line. You know, we just saw that shot of Terry Allen. That is tough. And the schedule they've gone through, the frustration. Everybody knows about Eric Crouch as a runner and all the hits that he takes. Well, look at that. When you're a quarterback, guys come in, they're getting blocked, they're getting tipped over, and they can head down toward those knees. You can't do it in the NFL. You can see it wasn't an intentional shot by ATN. First down of the Jayhawks, 35. Cedric. Short gain only to the 32. You know, we were just talking as they look at McPherson after the interception. The schedule really was tough on Jerry Allen this year. Now, here's the staff, but they're under the gun. It's fifth year, and everybody's saying, you got to right. win, you got to win. They ended up with the toughest schedule in the country by far. Three of their five losses have come to UCLA, Colorado, Oklahoma. Those are three teams with a combined record of 20 and four. Now, three more conference games, Nebraska tonight, Texas, Iowa State. Those three coming into the weekend, 21 and three. And they, and they pr played against a Kansas State team with a very deceiving record. Reports in the newspaper are that it doesn't look very bright for Terry Allen Houston. Not looking bright right now as Diedrich on the long run to the 12. Darren Diedrich close to the 100-yard mark now on his 16th carry. And Derek Diedrich gives him that big power eye back. You see him putting his shoulder down and saw the touchdown where he went in untouched earlier. This is a running back. Combine him with Thunder Collins. When both these guys are fresh, the defenses just have no chance to stay with them as the game goes on. Nebraska ready to add to their 20-point advantage from the 12. Shot keeps it. Look at. He's down to the one. It's first and goal from there. A little bit later, we're going to be talking about the options for Eric Crouch. Not in an option attack, okay. but in options later in life maybe on Sundays in the NFL. He looks like a running back on a play like that. The 63-yard gadget play, he pulled away from defenders, looking like, maybe, what about a wide receiver? He's got those kind of options, potentially. Well, Scott Frost, who played a few seasons before Eric Crouch did here in Nebraska, went on to become a fairly decent extra defensive back with the Jets for a few seasons. On first and goal, Crouch is in. Another rushing touchdown for Eric Crouch, the 55th of his career. Turner Gilt on the sideline as quarterback coach. And Nebraska about to go up by 27. At what point do you take him out? Bringing your backup, Jamal Lord, it is early. And it is now 27 to nothing. You think about the numbers, the Heisman potential. 11 carries, 47 yards, 11 of 17, 119. Kind of believe he'll play through three tonight. Oh my God. Do not celebrate, God damn it. Welcome back to Lawrence once again. 27 to nothing. Nebraska on top of Kansas. Looking at some of the other scores around the country. And don't forget Oregon and Arizona State are going to be coming up next on College Football Saturday presented by Kia Zara. Gasaway and Fulton. It'll be Byron Gasaway. Not headed north. Unfortunately headed to the boundary. 
We're Mike of College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Sarah. One company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Subway. Eat fresh. Dominating performance. They're number two in the polls. Number one in the BCS standings. Man, it's almost been like a home game. We talked about the eight home games this year, the most for Nebraska since 1905. Make it nine. Ninety percent of the audience, it seems, at least 75, anywhere 85, 90 percent is. Finally, they get a good run on a little counter to Reggie Duncan. He's across the midfield stripe. It has been that kind of night for Nebraska, though. Keo Craver forced him out. A little misdirection, and that is by far the biggest play of the night. And you talk about a great strength for a team where you use that strength against them. Pursuit, speed, quickness. See everyone stepping up for Nebraska. And just a little misdirection, a little misstep. And see that left ankle still taped? That's the ankle that he sprained against Oklahoma a few weeks ago. Still not 100%, but that was a good effort from Reggie Duncan. In Nebraska territory, Duncan again. Man, knifing through to make the stop. It was Mark Bedrill. Got him low. No gain. In fact, maybe a loss of a yard on that snap. Reggie Duncan, not a big guy from Colleen, Texas. You see him glance to the sideline. He's a little winded after that long run. He's thinking, okay. Okay, guys, now would be about a good time for me to take a rest. Colleen's been pretty good to the jail. They have. Six players on the current squad from Colleen, Texas. Kinsey in trouble. Ah. Off the fingertips of his wide receiver, Jermaine Fulton. And, and when you are struggling, you need each and every makeable play. And that's a makeable play. So instead of third and 11, you have third and two or three. And you, then you have a chance. Well, I talked about the passing game earlier. Fifth worst completion percentage in the nation, 45%. So you don't need third and, and long. And you know what? They've improved the last few weeks because they were down around 39%. Kansas State is the worst in Division One A play, 42%. So it is a statewide problem. Third and about a dozen. This is what he does well. Can't get away, though. Catching up with him from behind the middle linebacker, Jamie Burrow. Man, it's going to be a punt. When you leave seven guys in the block and the defense can get pressure with five people and cover your three with their six, not going to find anyone open. And, and Mario Kinsey did as good a job as he could trying to buy time for his receivers to get open, but three guys are not going to beat six in a pass pattern. Craver is back deep, along with Dewan Gross. The punt by Terrell on the run, Keo Craver. The pirouette is still in both. Across the 23 to the 24, he loves to spin. Brought down by Greg Nix. Time out of the field, Nebraska in the driver's seat once again. Nebraska's got it back at their own 24-yard line. Looking like the number one team in the nation, even though the polls listed as number two. Eric Crouch will stay in there at quarterback. These guys up in that box. Will it make a difference to Thunder Collins? He took himself down, didn't he? Just shy of the 30-yard line, about five for Thunder. Well, we've talked about Nebraska number one of the BCS getting together with number two Oklahoma last week in that 20-10 win. Oklahoma... Did a number on Tulsa. Not a surprise. Miami over Temple. Miami's schedule mm -hmm. hurt them in the long run. Michigan losing. Stanford. Oh, what a devastating loss for the Cardinal. 42 to 28. And, and UCLA tra trailing Washington State. That could be a huge loss for the Bruins. Fullback has not been able to get off tonight. That time it was Paul Castle. And it's been an effective. The dive series has been effective for Nebraska all year long, but Kansas has stayed at home on that play. Travis Watkins the left end making the stop. And I think if Nebraska can go unblemished through this conference schedule, you know, where they face Kansas State, a very improving team, and then Colorado, and then the Big 12 championship game, I mean, it's a 
obviously be in the Rose Bowl. Castle with the first block. Crowd still coming up short, though, by about a yeah. Fullback did a good job. But they still get great penetration on Eric Crouch on the option. And a punt is coming for Nebraska. But that is great play recognition when we talked to Tom Hayes yesterday. He talked about the fullback flare option. That's where the fullback just starts to run outside the tight end. He's going to be a lead blocker. See, there you go. See, that's that fullback flare option. I told you guys about that. That's the way to play it. They keep running it. We'll stop it every time. Kyle Larson, he's not been too active tonight. They haven't needed him. Roger Ross waits back deep inside the 35. And the best of the night for Larson. Backpedaling Ross at the 20. Tripped up, and it was a trip. Using his leg to make the stop, Troy Hassebrook. So Kansas deep in their own territory at the 19-yard line. Third time they'll have it in the second half. Nebraska, before that last series, averaging 5.4 per snap. Kansas, 1.8, and it was 0.7 before that young man, Reggie Duncan, peeled off a 41-yard run. Can't get out of the backfield there. Brent Rude, the freshman from Lincoln, making that hit. Downstairs we go, Eric Clements. Yeah, now time for the Subway game summary, guys, and the score reflective of the offensive yardage as well. Look at Eric Crouch, 123 passing, 45 running. Darren Dietrich, over 100 yards in the total yards. It's a wipeout, as 27 to nothing would indicate at this point, guys. All right, Eric. Five plus left in the third quarter. It's only a question of when you pull your starters if you're Frank Solich. Kinsey. Tough throw on the run, and it's picked off. Another interception. This time, it is DeJuan Gross. You know, if you're going to move the pocket, you need to be able to threaten the defense. And this defense is so fast that you move the pocket against them, and they still stay in their static position. I mean, there's a cornerback who was in a short zone, and when you started to drift in his direction, all he did was gain leverage and deepen up. You see the safety in the middle of the field, Booker, and then out of nowhere, the quarterback just drifts back, and the ball is thrown almost directly to him. Now, the quarterback doesn't see that because that guy's up short, but you had no receiver to occupy him in that short zone. From the 42, plenty of fakes in the backfield. Crouch going for the bundle, and off the fingertips. And Kyle Ringenberg is tied in. Two right there next yes. to each other for Nebraska. Now, somebody ran the wrong route there. No. Kyle Ringenberg is thinking, you know, I've caught a pass or two tonight already. I know where this one is going, and I'm going to go get in the way. But I don't think that that play was designed like that. Both guys in the same area. Two right next yeah, door. You, you've got, that's just uh, like there's just some honey down there, and the bees are. Short side, Thunder Collins. Inside the 40. He's got it to the 39 for a gain of three. It'll bring up third and long for the Cornhuskers. Darren Diedrich came into the game second in Big 12 rushing. Thunder Collins, 60 a game. Diedrich, 120 a game. Arizona State and Oregon. That should be a lot closer to the second half of our doubleheader. Collins, unfortunately, hobbling after the last play. He's got five for 32 after the last pickup of three. He's also got a touchdown run tonight. Now I think the go-to guy is right here, Wilson Thomas. See if they go to their big 6'6 guy. The slot man over the middle. Crouch has been looking at it the whole way and now throws it too tall for John Bowling. And there were one, two, three defenders. And it looked like the underneath was available. Instead, the tight end are a little bit deeper over the middle. And a failure on a third down conversion. You already see tape on that left ankle Thunder Collins has. And it, you know, a lot of little ankle injuries seen over the last couple of weeks. So I'd much rather have a slight ankle sprain than a slight knee sprain. Roger Ross waits for the Larson punt. And yeah, will it find the end zone? Nebraska's got it covered. They do it well on special teams, don't they? And that's why they have so many starters. Pat Ricketts, who's played so well tonight in the secondary, 
Did it again on specials. Great job taking a little something off the punt, but when you look at the outside, there's no taking off there. Everybody hustles, you circle, you get real near the goal line. You don't go in the goal line and wait for the ball to come to you. Get down to about the two-yard line, turn your back, and locate the football. We've already seen the job that Ricketts has done in the regular package in the secondary. Nebraska starting so many of their first-team players on their special teams as well. Zach Dyer back in at quarterback. But he'll throw out of his own end zone. Duncan, breathing room, three to the five. Let's check in with Eric Clements. Eric. Yeah, Thunder Collins could not put a whole lot of weight on that left ankle, which is heavily taped anyway. They're examining him right now on the sideline. And meanwhile, uh, Lornell McPherson, the defensive back, has a mile sprain of the right ankle. He had that retaped and is testing it on the sideline as well. So both number ones for Nebraska with a little bit of ankle problems tonight, guys. The number you don't want tonight. Second and seven from the five. Duncan waiting for the pursuit to slide by. Out to the 10, shy of the first down by two, wrapped up by Jamie Burrow, the middle linebacker, the senior from Ames, Iowa. And that was the big play that Duncan popped earlier on his long run and talked about ankle injuries, and there is Duncan getting up, favoring that left ankle that he sprained against Oklahoma. And you know what, if you're nicked up a little bit, you can't do your team a lot of good at 80%. You know, let your backup, who's healthy, come in, take a couple of snaps. Big third down for Kansas to get out of this hole. They need to take it across the 12. It's Duncan. He can't get back to the original line. That kind of penetration for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Burrow along with Thomas. Bernard Thomas, a sophomore from Palo Alto, California. Yeah, you, you talked about it earlier. They're down to the three deep area. And, and what Craig Bowl and Frank Solich are doing, they're keeping all their players hungry. They're saying, okay, We'll put the second team guys in for a little while, the third team guys, but we want our starters to remain intense in this game because you don't want guys to get on the sideline and, and get too loose and just enjoying themselves. Everybody plays, and you get this rotation. Jarrell with a combination of Craver and Gross, a wobbler, and a shot on Jawan Gross. He may need one more. Didn't get the block, though, as he tried to get it to the boundary. Weirs over there to force him out. And another shoe off. <laughs> this field turf must grab the shoe so well that it comes off the foot. So Nebraska's got it back close to the midfield stripe. It seems like they've had that all night long. Up next, the second half of our doubleheader college football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah on Fox Sports Net. Can they slow down? Joey Harrington has been hopeful. The Oregon Ducks matching up at home with Arizona State. Oregon had that win streak stopped at Austin Stadium a couple weeks ago. From the 48, nothing doing for Darren Diedrich. Diedrich backed up by Collins, who is on the sideline with the ankle. Travis Watkins made the play, so you look at the one behind him for potential down the road, and that's Josh Davis, the sophomore from Loveland. You know, there has been some defensive effort from Kansas tonight. The offense has stalled out a lot, but when the defense has been called on, they've gone out there, they've played, they haven't hung their heads at all. And yeah, they've been out there all night. I mean, look at that. They have really been sticking. Marquis Hayes from the beginning of the game, but don't forget Kansas, they've only got three first downs, and they're 0 for 10 on third down tries. Their offense has had no yep. long rallies or no long drives to keep the defense off the field. It is tough. Tom Hayes, defensive coordinator, has to be pleased because they have contained one of the very best offensive units in the nation. They've got to get lined up there. Nebraska 11th in total offense. And now we will get a timeout, I believe. That, that's a smart timeout. It's Kansas using their first of the second half. 13 years, five at Kansas for Terry Allen, eight at Northern Iowa, where he was a huge success. But 75 and 26, they won the Gateway Conference, seven out of eight seasons. And really a quarterback maker. You know, we talked about the misstep that they had with Kurt Warner, but he finally got him in the lineup. And success 
Great success. Well, they're used to it on the other sideline. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Second half of the 1990s, they truly did belong to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They were the dominant team of the last decade. First of three Husker titles came against Miami in the Orange Bowl. Tom Osborne finally got his due. The next year, Tommy Frazier running all over the Gators in the Fiesta Bowl. And what a finish to a career for Tommy Frazier. And back at the Orange Bowl, two years later, Amon Green now running for the Packers of the NFL and Scott Frost beat Tennessee in what would be Coach Osborne's grand finale. That's interesting because you kind of brought it up a little bit earlier. When I watched Tommy Frazier in that bowl game, everybody thought, Tommy Frazier, boy, he'd be a great running back in the NFL. But to move from option quarterback to running back in the NFL, there was so much more new learning. And learning to run, to block, to catch, do all the little things, it's tough. Tough transition. Well, we'll talk about it with Eric Krauts. He drills it for Wilson Thomas. Thomas caught in stride, putting his wide receiver in positions to succeed. Quincy Rowe caught up with him from behind. It's a first down for the Huskers. Uh, that's similar to the play that they had earlier where Eric didn't throw to Wilson Thomas, but you had man-to-man -man coverage underneath, so you can catch that ball on the run. Your guy can get some yards after the catch, and they pick up the first down. Good read by Eric Crouch. Crouch out of the gun once again. They set up the flanker screen over the middle. Big Wilson Thomas, horse collared by Algie Atkinson, the strong side linebacker, but a gain of almost 10. Give him nine. Boy, Algie Atkinson is a strong individual. I mean, Wilson Thomas goes 6'6", 215 pounds, so he's a very big wide receiver. And he got one arm up on him around the shoulders, and you're right, horse collar. him. I don't know what a horse collar looks like, but... I'll take your word and for it. And only one arm. That's how strong the is right that, arm is. Is that a horse there. collar one arm tackle? A, a clothesline, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Eric Crouch for the first down. He's down to the 27. As long as you're talking about Eric Crouch as a running back, and we see him maneuver his way over to the left side there. Whenever the draft analysts talk about him going to the NFL as a running back, they bring up former Iowa quarterback Ed Podolak as an example, a player that went on to become a solid running back for a number of years for the Kansas City Chiefs. But I think that the league is so much more different now than it was then, and where you go to look for talent is different. Eric Crouch, body build, when I look at him, more of a wide receiver than a running back. First down, the Jayhawks 27. Crouch after the play fake, wants to go back the other way. It's Wilson Thomas, first and goal, Nebraska. Eight-yard line of the Jayhawks, tripped up by Carl Ivey. And if he had his mind set on just playing quarterback, there are a lot of teams north of the border that would love a quarterback with his skills, his ability to move in the pocket, and he throws the ball adequately enough to play in the CFL. Did you see the tight end of that play? He put his hand up in the air yeah. and realized, wait a minute, it's not mine. <laughs> not for me. They've got guys a little too close to each other in, in the route running. And I think when they turn on the projector Monday morning, there, there will be some things to correct. Quiet third quarter for Crouch and the Huskers, but they didn't need to do much because their defense has just overwhelmed Kansas' offensive unit tonight. Huskers, impressively, up by 27. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah continues on Fox Sports. Now we start the fourth quarter. The number two team in the nation looking like that and the number one team as well. The BCS standings, Nebraska 27 to nothing. Eric Crouch, number 27, talked about as a running back in the NFL. What about a wide receiver? Bert Emanuel, Freddie Solomon, a couple of college quarterbacks that made the transition to wide receiver in the NFL. Did I mention I was a high school quarterback? Another great <laughs> example of a guy who's been nominated for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Joel Myers, along with James Lofton, Eric Clemens down to the sideline. Moving all over the place. Well, let's talk about it now that we've got a chance with the dead ball foul coming up and a mark off of five. What about the transition for you, James? Well, I, I think if you look at Eric Crouch and just his physical dimension, 6'1", 190, 195 pounds, 4.4 in the 40. I mean, right there. Friends. Prior to the snap, still first down. Just with his physical dimensions, we, we know about his great 10-yard speed, what they call the gap speed, his ability to run at with the ball in the open field. So it's all there. And I'm pretty sure he has good enough hand-eye coordination. You see him pitching the ball with the right hand and the left hand. So both hands work well. I think receiver would be an ideal position for him. 
because he may have that dream that he doesn't want to go north of the border. You brought it up. Right. And he would. He seems like an automatic for CFL football where the quarterback's got to be mobile on a wider field. So his dream may be, I've got to give it a shot here first. Darren Diedrich ripped down. Getting in. It was the linebacker, Leo Atien. They cannot complain about the play of the defense, the Jayhawks of Kansas. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. We're in Lawrence, Joel Myers, James Lofton, Eric Clemens. It's been all Nebraska. That's not a shock. The surprise is that Nebraska, A, has not scored more points because their field position has been phenomenal. The Kansas defense has done a solid job tonight. And the second surprise, that the Jayhawks have not had any offense at all. Only six yards of total offense in the first 30 minutes of play. Crouch. And put it up for grabs, and it was almost taken away by the defensive back, Andre De Andrew Davison. The senior from Detroit almost came up with a pick. Yeah, you know what? I saw them run this play yesterday during their walkthrough. They, they kind of ran it as their warm-up drill. And I thought, you know, that's an odd little play. Just quarterback down the line. The receiver running a five-yard out. And Andrew Davidson must have gotten up on that hill that overlooks his stadium and said, gee, I think they're going to run that tomorrow. And if he had caught that, we would have seen how fast Eric Crouch is. It would have been a foot race. Well, Crouch was pulling away one of the defensive backs, but he caught that touchdown in the gadget play of 63 yards. It's back at the 15, and we've got a timeout called. This time by Nebraska. Opening minute of the fourth quarter. Welcome back to Lawrence or Lincoln. <laughs> It is incredible the way they came. Darren Diedrich on our FedEx ground numbers. Overall tonight, Diedrich, 20 carries for 98 yards. And, well, he likes running left, obviously, well, James. Well, who plays on the left side? Dave Bulk and Tony Fonati. Well, you get some yards running behind those guys on the left side. Fonati, you can't see around him at 6'4". He's got to be about 375. Now, now, and here's a guy who's he's a junior this year. We talked about the fact that he turns 20 later this month. It's going to be really tempting because if he does his research and he asks the NFL people, okay, where would I be drafted? You don't find guys that big, that mobile, who can play guard. I mean, he's bigger than a lot of tackles. You know, we looked at Mike Williams down at Texas, and Solich loves him, and I know he'd love to have him back again next year. Coach Solich talking to us yesterday about this huge young man. You know, he's a, he's a young player. He's really about a, uh, a year behind in terms of his age where, um, where a junior would normally be. And so he's still developing and maturing, but, uh, but he's played just great football for us since he arrived. Uh, almost immediately became a, a starter for us and uh, we, we think is outstanding. Almost a pick for Marcus Rogers, the middle linebacker, reading the eyes of the quarterback because John Gibson was right behind him. You know, not a great throw to throw back across the grain, but you can tell Eric Crouch is becoming more of a, quote, passing quarterback because that time he's looking to throw the ball. There was an alley that he probably could have run, and maybe a year ago, two years ago, he would have taken off and run, but he's looking to throw the ball. Josh Brown has a couple tonight. This is going to be a 32-yard attempt. Did he push it? No, he got it inside the upright from 32 yards away. So the Huskers averaging 37 a game, 30 on the board so far. <laughs> Nissan Nebraska scoring drive, 37 yards, 328 off the clock at a 32-yard field goal. So I never figured that out. They didn't move the ball 37 yards. They kicked the field goal. What, what does all that mean? What do those numbers really mean? It all evens out in the wash, partner. <laughs> After the kickoff from Brown, it's going to be brought back by Fulton. Yard into the end zone. He's got about 17 on the return as they knock him out at the 16-yard line. Well, don't forget television's most unique brand of football commentary airs every Sunday morning. NFL this morning on Fox Sports Net. A look at Bengals running back Corey Dillian. In fact, he's got a bye. He's going to join the gang in the studio. Bilber puts Jerome Bettis up the Cyber Strader. NFL this morning. Pre-game show that's not really a pre-game show. That's tomorrow at 10.30 Eastern on Fox Sports Day. There's some people saying that Jerome Bettis is the most valuable player of the first half with what he did. No argument. Steelers. 
No argument because it's taken so much pressure off of Cordell Stewart. He's throwing for a higher percentage. Kinsey at quarterback. Double reverse. Double pass. reverse. Kinsey. Oh. It didn't work. Chris Kelsey all over the play, eating up Byron Gassaway. Now, don't you think that they saw this on their own game? The defense saw the same play? The freshman firing to Eric Crouch, and 63 yards later, some history is made. 20 to 10 win over Oklahoma. Kelsey did his homework. He watched the highlights, saw his play do his players do that. Stayed at home. It's a loss of 11. Second and 21. Dyer. Man. Barely got out of the end zone. Little penetration there. Kelsey on top of the situation again. Along with Des Moines Adams. Now, if you get Kelsey to go somewhere else, you have a play because you're going to end up with Mario Kinsey. Right here. There he goes. He's going to be open. But they still had it defended pretty well, even with that. In the neighborhood. Did not leave home, did they? Zach Dyer stays in the quarterback. And they're down in the Nebraska end of the field. Big goose egg on the third downs. The tight end, I can't believe it. Got one. And he took a shot. Adrian Jones, the sophomore from oh, Carter sure. High School in Dallas. He, well, he, I'm talking about his reception. That's his first of the night. They haven't looked for the tight end all night. Willie Amos made the stop. And he's a, he's a big guy. They do a great job spreading the field. They put three wide receivers on the left. And see the nice look by Dwyer to his left. Get the safety out of the way. And Willie Amos comes in and knocks him out short of the first down. 0 for 11 on third down conversion. Ben Cornelson waiting for the Terrell punt. It'll be his first return to the night. So now Frank Solich getting some more people involved. When they come out offensively, will they use That's a returnable ball? Cornelson finding the lane. There he goes. Terrell, can he get to him? That's the only man, the putter. Don't think so. Touchdown, Nebraska. The kid had a sock on his corn head. The young man who grew up not far away in Shawnee, Kansas, Ben Cornelson, with the thrill of his life. Tell me, you think he's got some family and friends here? From Shawnee, Mission. I mean, it just opens up. And, and some of this is Cornelson. A lot of it is the blocking. But also a little speed at the tail end of the play. And Shawnee, Mission is actually a great track and field high school. Nebraska about to be 18-1 on Fox Sports Net. They're on their season average. 37 a game. They have met their target all over the Jayhawks. Not exactly a warm night. Started out about 60 degrees, probably in the high 40s now, but there's enough antifreeze in those young men. They do not have to worry. Now, there's the hat of the night. That's the winner. I don't think we have to search any longer. Oh, shucks. The kickoff. <laughs> yes, wait. And Fulton are back. It'll be Fulton staying there. What a night for the Huskers. Best damn sports show, period. Every night. 7.30, 11.30, only on Fox Sports Net. Check it out. You will enjoy it. The best damn sports show, period. What a night it has been for us, our entire crew. Executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borch. Coordinated producers of Scottish Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game, well, we had a man in the middle. Our producer, Mike Kelling, graduate of the University of Kansas. Our director, Ken Potts, graduate of the University of Nebraska. So Larry Rogers, our tech producer, he's sitting between the two during the show tonight. He couldn't get into either one of those two schools. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd, Marshall Childs. The true freshman from El Reno, Oklahoma, on a run. And that's a huge gain out to the 25-yard line for the Jayhawks. Our college football Saturday studio show produced by Lloyd Maxson, directed by Chip Terrell, head of field operations, Andrea Berry. Eric Clemens is going to be a prominent player later in this game. 37 to nothing, Nebraska. He got him open. Will he get it? 
It's late, but it still gets there in time for Roger Ross. Will they get off the shutout? Bland on the pop. A penalty flag down. Zach Dwyer just pounded his right hand to the turf. Somebody left early. I think the official said he had a headache. Nothing compared to the way the staff feels right Man. now. So, somebody left early. And we got excited. Guys, it's late for a conference. You made the call. Come on, Tom. Illegal participation on the offense. 12 men. Repeat the foul. Now, there is a start. Well, that tells you why they had trouble in coverage. Now, let's, let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This guy's not really on the field. <laughs> Here, just X him out a little bit more. We won't be able to see him. Oh, uh, I think the extra guy is either the fullback or the tight end. The doctor is in for Fox Sports Net. Rocks. Dyer by design on the move. Too low for Jermaine Fulton, the senior from Topeka. It's got to be tough. Here you are, a senior wide receiver, like Roger Ross, like Jermaine Fulton, Gassaway as a junior. You're starting all over with a new quarterback, a redshirt freshman, and Dyer, who's a sophomore, and it's your last shot. That is tough. Nothing you can do about it. Try to make the most of the situation. Harrison Hill out most of the year with a shoulder injury. Their leading receiver coming into the season. So it was by committee. They didn't have one real target this year at Kansas. On the delay, Childs. Manny shot down. Right back to the original line, the 20 by Jamie Burrow. So a punt coming up. Nebraska, with one of the best defensive units in the nation, fifth in total defense. They only give up 11 points a game. Their third best in scoring defense. It means a lot to that 11. Sure. And Craig Bowles, he wants, they want a shutout. And, and you saw the effort that the special teams unit gave on the last punt return, and they're going to try and duplicate it again right here. Cornelson, who had a 71-yard return, they and they almost got it. They, got they did that. deflect it. Getting to it was Ben Zajek, the reserve wide receiver. So Zajek did get something there. He's out of Beatrice, Nebraska. And Ten and a half to play in great field position again for the Huskers. And we see the double numbers. Deion Gross also plays on the punt team. He's number five. Well, they can't be in at the same time. And Nebraska for this game brought 70 players. And if you're kind of one of those double number guys, that means that both of you guys are pretty good. But when they play at home, they shoot up 115 players. Nebraska's had the ball 12 times tonight, James. Seven of the 12 times, they have started in plus territory. The reserve, Jamal Lord, in at quarterback, doing his best Eric Crouch, and running very efficiently up the middle of the sophomore from Bayonne, New Jersey. He's got nine on his first snap of the night. Now, either Jamal Lord has grown since they measured him at 6'2", 215 pounds, or Eric Crouch has shrunk a little bit at 6'1", 200 pounds, because there is more than an inch difference in height between the two, and Jamal Lord is going to give them a big physical presence at that quarterback position for years to come. Final 10 minutes of play. Diedrich stays in there, stepping out of the arm tackle. There goes Darren Diedrich. Look out. Touchdown, Nebraska. 38 yards on the score. Sloppy tackling by Kansas. Oh, it's just a matter of, of your defense getting worn out. What have we had? 12 three and outs from Kansas during the course of the ball game. Two first downs. That's going to take a toll on any defense. 
Yes, sir. Dietrich now with a couple of touchdown runs. 136 yards after the 38-yarder there. Josh Brown with the extra point. 44 to nothing. Aaron Dietrich again in the end zone. Nebraska scoring drive. Two plays, 47 yards. Darren Diedrich, the junior from Scarborough, Ontario. Grew up with a hockey stick and lost it early. Gassaway, Fult, waiting for the kick. Gassaway will stay there. So Kansas again at their own 20-yard line. College football Saturday. On Fox Sports Net, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world's days better. By Kia Sierra, one company, countless solutions. And by Nissan, driven. The Helen Forsman Spencer Museum of Art. One of the most beautiful campuses. And right off of the other side, Fog Allen Fieldhouse. The statue of Fog Allen. In front, James Naismith as well. Naismith Drive, Zach Dyer in their quarterback. But right now, Eric Crouch is going to stay on the sideline. would have to think, now that Lord has taken over, his numbers and he gets a little over 200 yards usually though eric crouch is closer to 300 yards in total offense isn't it yeah getting it more done on the ground than through the air but you know eric crouch is a, a guy who can hurt you in two phases of the game now and do it pretty effectively the passing game is coming around and i think if you're going to win the big 12 championship game and have a shot at the national title that you've got to be able to throw the football and they have been doing that better and better as the season has worn on Dyer calling his own number on the quarterback draw. Went back against the grain and got the first down across the 33 to the 34. I'll stop it momentarily. Hollowell making the hit. And they move the sticks. That's only the fifth first down of the night for Kansas compared to 21 for Nebraska. Where is Red Cashin when you need him? I'd like to hear him at this juncture. So this is only the third road game of the season for Nebraska. Previous two win at Baylor, win 36 to three. Childs on the move. Childs laying some lumber on the defensive back. Pat Ricketts. Now you were talking about three and outs. There have been too many of those. Back-to-back -back first downs. And that is the first time tonight, back-to-back -back first downs. But let's face it, Nebraska now going deep into their 2D and 3D. When we talked to Terry Allen yesterday, he said we'd like to have 70% of our plays, our drives, where we gain a first down, just so that we can keep our defense off the field, because you've seen what happens to defense as it gets worn out throughout the course of a ball game. Delay. Good job by Dan Koch. First run, sophomore for Haven, Florida. Man, he had to make a miss. They were all over him. Deep penetration. He still got three to the 47. Dropped by Bernard Thomas and Barrett Rude. So Frank Solich at 10 and 0 now with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We talked about K-State in Lincoln next week. An approved K-State squad. Just ask Iowa State. And then a week off to get ready for Boulder on a Friday, the 23rd of November. Dyer running the option. The quarterback down to the 43. Cooper, backup linebacker. Pam Solich down to the sideline. Nebraska Cornhusker football has been their life. 23 years as a part of the staff. Certainly paid his dues. And also, one of the nicest people we deal with in the Big 12. And I think he does a fantastic job in being head coach and also He's offensive there. coordinator. Not easy wearing two hats. Dyer again looking to run for the first down and runs through the ankle tackle. He's got the first down to the 38. And I think that Frank Solich in last week's game, you know, you, you have these legendary plays and now he has the call. Because that call of that reverse pass will go down in history as the call. You know, everyone will see the execution of the play, but it's really about the man who made the call. And they always said, oh, he's, he's not a gambler. He wouldn't make that kind of call. He wouldn't risk it. Well, he did make the call. As they stuffed the first down snap, Childs on the carry. 
Barrett Root stopping it. But I, I still like his competitiveness. Uh, we were talking to him at the walkthrough yesterday, and we said, is there a player on the team who can out push up you? I mean, because you can tell he's still fit. Very fit. He said, no, there's not. <laughs> Another Heisman Award candidate, Joey Harrington of the Oregon Duck. And Harrington is the entire pack. What a rifle he's got for a right arm. And the door is open for Oregon. Now that UCLA has been upset by Washington State, losing at Washington State tonight. Mitchell Scott on the carry. Is everybody getting involved as well for Terry Allen, which you like to see? So out in the Pac-10, let me see if I got this correct. With one loss, you have Washington. Are they on top of the Pac-10 now? Without a doubt. They're only lost to UCLA. They lost big to UCLA, but UCLA's got two setbacks now. And Stanford has two. Oregon has one loss. One loss for Oregon right now. What's happening to Little Red there on the sideline? Okay. I think it's going to be a match race. Eric's ready for that guy. A time out of the field. And we were talking about the bowl championship series, the standings, and what everybody has done. Oklahoma cruising, just like Miami. Michigan losing on the road in East Lansing by a couple. Texas rolled. Stanford lost at Washington. Tennessee defeated Notre Dame, Florida over Vanderbilt, UCLA losing, Oregon coming up next, Eric Clements, it is tight. Yeah, and it's very tight, and I think uh, those who are worried about Miami, of course, number one in both polls, the AP and the uh, other poll, but uh, number three in the BCS, I do believe their strength of schedule is strong enough down the stretch if they can run the table, they would be in that national championship game. Nebraska's looking awfully good right now as they get attacked by both the mascots, but they still, <laughs> they still got to win the Big 12 championship game. And that, of course, could be something a little more difficult should they meet Oklahoma again. Hey, Eric, if you got a pin, you could deflate him in a hurry. Uh, no, I think he's bigger than I am. And I just gave him five, so it's okay. But anyway, I still think Miami has a good shot if they can stay undefeated the rest of the way through. But we'll see. It's going to be difficult. That picking up on that, Eric, James, it didn't help that Virginia Tech lost today no, it didn't. when it comes to Miami yeah. and their strength of schedule. It hurts their strength of schedule later. First down, bat to 25. Nebraska trying to preserve the shutout. A little more than six to play. Low throw. Ross goes down. Do they give him the catch? I think yes. Roger Ross got down and got that ball. Now, he has a brother on the, am I correct, on the Nebraska team who did not make the trip as a shoulder injury, but Roger Ross, to his credit, still out there playing and battling. Now, that's the fifth consecutive first down on this drive for Kansas. In the previous 40-plus minutes, 50-plus minutes, they had four first downs for the contest. And they're going to line up in Nebraska's power type eye here. Dyer, naked on the edge. Back of the end zone, he had the tight end. Touchdown, Kansas. He got it to Adrian Jones. And, and redirected him during the pass play. Said, okay, no, you're not open quite enough. You stop right there and I'll hit you with it. Once he gets out the pocket, he knows who he wants to go to, but it's not a clear line. He says, no, you go this way, over here. Good call. There's no question Dyer is ahead of Kinsey when it comes to the passing game. Kinsey's got a great arm. We talked about his mechanics, though. In the point after, Johnny Beck. And seven on the board for the Jayhawks. We'll come right back to the final 5.50. All Nebraska. <laughs> Nissan scoring drive. First one of the night for the Jayhawks. All those first downs, five consecutive first downs. After picking up four the entire night. Well, you can't slow those guys down. You can only try to contain the Jayhawk band. <laughs> they are definitely not having a bad night. The tuba section is on a roll. <laughs> Johnny Beck will kick it away to Josh Davis. 37-point lead for the Huskers. They're letting 20 to nothing at the half. Seven out of 12 times they've started with the ball in Kansas territory. It's a pop-up 
infield fly roll. Now he's call for the fair catch. We're tied in, got it. That's Troy Hasselbrook. And he's across the 40, returned to the 42 yard line. Up next, Joey Harrington, the eighth ranked Oregon Ducks with one loss and looking a lot better now in the Pac 10 race with UCLA losing again. Taking it on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Arizona State can put some points on the board. We've seen that earlier this year. But you, you know, it's funny. It's funny how quickly teams can move up and move down. And you know, you look at this team. Program, but out there in the back ten, a few years ago, Oregon State dead. Great year last year. Washington State a few years ago, they were dead. Now they're back in the race. Deontay Grixby, the eye back. That's his first carry of the night. Grixby is the widest of the eye backs. Not real tall. 5'8", 205 pounds. Five yards for Grixby. Can we get it again? Yes. Boy, he's got a convoy, doesn't he? Doesn't make any difference. These are the white jerseys. They block well. First down, Nebraska. They've got some depth along that offensive line, too. And it's the, the one thing that this program really has going for it, when, when linemen come here, for the most part, they understand that they're going to have to sit a year. Now, we're looking at Tony Fonati. He didn't have to sit a year. 17 years old. He played as a true freshman on special teams in a backup role. But most guys redshirt a year. And they get that year in the weight room and a year of learning the system and exactly how they like to block and what they expect from their blockers. And, you talk about the pancake blocks and Fonuti, 15.7 pancake blocks per game. The next guy is only at nine pancake blocks a game. About seven for Grigsby on that first down. Nebraska's got some players, let's face it, that are two and three deep that could start for a lot of other teams with the way their program is going right now. The fullback, Paul Castle, he's got the first down to the 33 of the Jayhawks. Well, Nebraska had an opportunity to bury him early. They did, but they made their statement in the second half. They've got another first down with all backups in there. They came in with an 11-game winning streak. It's 12. Ah, the quarterback went the opposite way of the eye back. And Lord, is he gone? Yes, he is. Another touchdown for the Cornhuskers. Jamal Lord. Young man that selected Nebraska over Syracuse. And in talking to Frank Solich, and you talked about the experience of Jamal Lord and getting Jamal Lord the experience. Frank Solich really feels strongly about this young man. Now, I'm not sure what type of option this is, but watch the running back go this way and the quarterback go that way. <laughs> and then the running back goes, oops. Well, was that uh, was that call odd or even? I guess I'll take it on my own. Lord never looked back for the pitch, though, did yeah, he? And, and, you know, Josh <laughs> Davis was back there going, boy, I hope he doesn't pitch this. Hope he doesn't throw it on the ground. Sonero DeAngelis from Buffalo with that extra point Niagara Falls Ontario he, he was an all-state running back in Western New York our player of the game Dr. Pepper player of the game Darren Dietrich 38 yard touchdown run to cap off his night his final carry of the night 136 yards with a couple of scores he came in number the big 12 in rushing 120.1 yards per contest Dennis the or Ennis the Manatee would 120.4 so he wasn't far from the top spot in the conference lead no disagreement here Nebraska is number one in the nation for my money Oklahoma is number two they are that good and especially whoa, on the whoa, 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 whoa. and especially on the hold, defensive hold, side hold, of the ball. Hold everything did you see that Frank Solich was smiling on the sideline. It's too early to. It's 339 to play. He, he was smiling. Somebody <laughs> said something that got his funny bone. I want to see. Uh, can we freeze frame that? Can we take a frame by frame, actually? Now, I'll tell you a story about the walkthrough yesterday that I saw. Bolt 
Bolton is back waiting for the kickoff. It'll be Gassaway from the five. Into a pile past the 18. Now, did he or did he I saw break that three and a half minute smile? I had the binoculars on him. Watch, watch, watch. Grin, grin, grin. Yes. You see, a player tries to get in front of him to block the pearly whites, but there it is. <laughs> but yesterday, they're having the walkthrough. They're doing the special teams call out. And they get to the punt team. And one of the starters doesn't go out for the punt team. Frank Solich just goes, everybody up. All 70 players boom, around. He looks at them, pauses a second, goes, punt team, get out there. And that was it. And the rest of it was orderly to the point because everybody knew what was at stake. After knocking off Oklahoma last week, you don't want to come in you said and it. get upset. Take it loose. But Too loose. When I look at this ball club, when you, when you pick up those uh, recruiting uh, grades in February, Nebraska very rarely ranks in the top ten in the country. They don't get the, all the parade, all Americans. They get good players who run their system, who give it all they have. And I really believe that this team is made up of so many overachievers that they don't let down for games that they're supposed to win. They do a great job at the training table as well. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Coke on the carry. As Jonas Weatherby has taken over the junior from Annapolis, Maryland, at quarterback. So there Final must two and a half minutes. But you know what? You bring up a great point because there's a fine line now in talent. But yes, there is. There is a lot of discipline in the Nebraska program. Yep. You brought up getting everybody there. I said to Craig Bull, the defensive coordinator, any chance of a letdown? He goes, you know what? These guys smell blood right now. Yeah. They want it so badly, we don't even have to talk to them about it. And and, and they, they realize, you know, the polls and all that, but they're just going about their business, winning football games. Defense has been dynamite again, for Coach Bull. 51 to 7. Coke had some ideas on where he wanted to go. He just couldn't make up his mind. And he's put down after a gain of a yard, yard and a half. You know, the funny thing about college football is it's so different than the National Football League. In the NFL, when a team wins the Super Bowl, all of the assistants become very hot commodities. When I look at Craig Bowl and I look at Turner Gill, I mean, here are two guys who know this conference Second well, played in the conference, have been with a very successful team, and I believe they both make good head coaches somewhere. But you don't hear that on the rumor mill about other people's coaches, which, which is a credit where you don't want to tamper too much, but I think both those guys would be excellent choices anyway. On the carry for Kansas, first carry of the night for Harold McClendon. As Justin Smith brought him down. Turner Gill is the quarterback coach. Not a bad guy to have experience-wise. No, no, he's not. He's been around this offense. He's seen, you know, other people work their offenses. And, you know, he, he's an observer. And he's watching this. He's watched the implementation of kind of their new spread passing game and some of the different wrinkles that they do. So, you know, and he's learned from, I think, a very patient coach in Frank Solich, the guy who waited his turn to get his shot at the coaching job. Couple of more snaps. Right, Nebraska goes to 10 and 0. That's fumbled it again. Is it on the ground? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's yeah. another another shoe, or just a shadow. Well, you thought about a letdown at least at the beginning of the week, but then you said no. It's Nebraska. Their coaches won't let them have that kind of breakdown. Well, when I look at the first half and the first five minutes of the third quarter. That Kansas defense played about as hard as they could for the situations that they were put on the field. Awful field position for them. And, and, and played physical. I mean, these guys from Nebraska, they get on their little plane tonight. The, the training room will be full of guys tomorrow. It'll be an easy trip home. It's only a three-hour drive to Lincoln. And a celebration for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a well-deserved one. They were dominant from the outset of the contest. That'll do it. Final snap of the game, and Nebraska wins it by 44 points. James, tough night for that gentleman, and it's been a tough year. Last couple of years for Terry Allen, the extreme.
That's Frank Zolich because that program is one of the best in the nation for the last 25 years. So we get ready to wrap things up, but it's, well, we've got another game coming up on Fox Sports. Not a good one out in the Pac-10. For James Lofton and Eric Clements, I'm Joel Myers. We're not going anywhere, though. In fact, we're headed back to the studio. Rejoin Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, Artie Gigantino, Nebraska. Very dominant performance, guys.